All right. Uh, what's up, guys? This is the Africa Caesar. I wanted to address a situation um, that has occurred between last show and this show. Um, and if you haven't heard, Juan Neal, Nor Truth, will no longer be on the show. Um, it takes a lot of work to make this show each week. There's a lot of behind the scenes work that goes in from content to segments to interviews, social media. Um, and so I respect everybody who's been on the show and contributed in some shape, form, or fashion. Um, but at the end of the day, um, if we're taking this thing to the next level, everybody has to play a role. Everybody has to do their fair share of work. And, you know, I'm not going to have it to where, you know, you disrespect the work I put in or anybody else into this show. Um, having said that, I still love Juan. Um, still love Truth. They're still my brothers. I have no beef with any of them. Um, it just merely came down to um, a mutual respect thing. And it just, one side was giving it, the other one wasn't. And so, um, with that being said, I still love them. They're still my brothers. Juan's still my dude. He's probably one of the realest people that I still know. Great guy. Um, has a great brand and loose cannon. Uh, doing a lot of great things with Michigan Sneaker Exchange. Um, he's doing a lot of good things um, in the city of Detroit. So, I have no beef with them. And I will continue to support them any way that I can. Um, and even if I see them, you know, I still show them some love. Uh, but, I have to keep the show moving. Uh, I have to keep it moving in the direction that I saw or that I see to keep it to get it to the next level. Uh, so starting today, you will hear some familiar faces or <laughs> my bad, familiar voices, familiar voices. Um, I hope you like the direction that the show is going in. And um, if you don't or if you I, well, let me say this, I know uh, there will be some people out there who will miss the presence of one and truth. And I hope you stick around and see what we got planned. Um, if you like the direction the show is going, or if you don't, or if you miss uh, an element of the show, feel free to let us know. That's what it's all about. It's always about dialogue. It's all about engaging the community, the sneaker community, and being a voice for you. So if there's anything you feel, please like hit us up on Instagram. Hit us up on Facebook. Um, you guys already know where to follow. Um, the Sneaker Box underscore podcast on Instagram. Uh, look up the Sneaker Box podcast on Facebook. Um, follow us on Twitter at the underscore sneaker underscore box. Um, but engage us. Let us know what you think. Um, what would you like to hear? What do you miss that we're not doing anymore? Or what would you like to see us do that we haven't done? Um, like I said, I know some of you will be unhappy about the change, and I can't control that. All I could do is just keep it moving. So with that being said, I welcome all the dialogue, good or bad. We can talk. That's the thing about it. People need to start talking. Um, and I think we'll get somewhere. Not only talking, but listening, too. So in either event, the show must go on. So you already know what it is. This is the Sneaker Boss Podcast with Sneaker Party Trey. Yo, what a difference a week make. Uh, <laughs> it's crazy. Um, all right, so this is the African Caesar. All hail Caesar, emperor of Rome, monarch of the Roman Empire, ruler of the world. That's right. Um, also, I got my big brother back. Yeah. Guess who? Jump in, jump in, jump in. Jump in, jump in <laughs> mountain, 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 dude. <laughs> <laughs> right. JB, man. Back, right? What's up, man? Good to be back. I'm, I'm so happy to have you back, man. Like, it's been a long time coming, too. It's been, 
uh, no pun intended, but I also have another show called Full Circle, so it just kind of plays into that. Um, so, yeah, definitely. What's been up, man? What's... Oh, I've been hitting these events in and yeah, out of I town. You. Just a lot of positive things going on. Uh, and as the shows go on, we'll we'll get into a lot of things that's yeah. going on. And people sleep on Des Moines, Iowa. Really? If there's another sneaker show there, you need to go. Is that the state that has the uh, deep fried butter stick? Is that? Uh, yeah, I think so. Or Texas. Texas deep fries everything. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't, why do you look at it's me? Why do you look at the, the other? I don't know. It's just the, white the fat guy. I don't know. The fat white guy. I like the kind of guy that would eat deep fried butter. <laughs> right. He instantly yes, looks to the left. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh-huh. Stereotype. Uh, also, I got my other brother in the room, man, with Guru. Yes, <laughs> you are never getting another drop. This is How it. many of you believe that <laughs> if you did not have a teacher, you would have learned these 26 alphabets. Sir Knowledge. Yes, 26 alphabets. I didn't even know that until the drop, so. That's, that's going to be his hashtag. That's 26 Sir alphabets. Knowledge. <laughs> uh, Sir I'm Knowledge. Bad. It would be oh. nice if me pick my own drop. But whatever. Nah, you <laughs> stuck with that. You put that in the contract. Like, yo, no, this is your drop forever. And also, too, I have a radio legend, Detroit radio legend. Um yeah. Was part of the Drew and Mike show, for, and it was the number one show for like 22, 25 years, however long. Uh, and was part of Detroit Sports one hundred five point one. I which, think he was, which did not do as well. Yeah, I think you were the reason for that one. I'm, <laughs> I'm gonna blame you. It. I'm blaming I'm, you I'm for that. I'm part one. of the reason it failed. Mark Fellhauer in, in the house. He brought his bag of Adidas. I know. Oh, oh, you got Marky Mark. That is the <laughs> Marky Mark. perfect song for me for no reason whatsoever. <laughs> I mean, other than I'm as ripped as Wall. There, there you right? go. Literally, White Ranger just went out to your car and just pulled out the first CD he saw. Uh, I, for the record, I've never owned that CD or I've never bought that song. Yes, you have. No, yes, you have. no way. It's just like Drew. He's listening to Tuvok. Yeah, right. 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 Uh, <laughs> this is... That song is going to be stuck in my head now, unfortunately. Good, you deserve it. This is the Sneaker Boss Podcast with Sneaker Bar Detroit, a part of the Crepitec family. Uh, what's the point of spending all that money in your shoes if you're not going to keep them clean long enough to get your money's worth? Practice safe stunting. Go to crepitech.com and get your shoes some protection. Uh, make sure to follow us on social media. You can follow us on Instagram at the sneakerbox underscore podcast. On Twitter, uh, you can just look up the sneakerbox show. Uh, and on Facebook at the Sneaker Boss Podcast. And if you would like to talk to us, you can call us. Typically, we do the show every Monday between 11 and noon Eastern Standard Time. Uh, call us at triple eight seven nine nine five two six seven. Um, get right into it. Um, yeah, the sneaker box top ten releases from the previous week. I give it a uh, a ten, a ten, a fucking ten. That dude really loves the number ten. <laughs> all right, uh, Converse number ten. Start with the uh, Converse All Star Highline Egret. Dope shoe has the zipper, no laces. Um, Chuck Taylor's are making a comeback, like. I've always liked Converse and Chuck Taylor's classic shoe, so um, I know they're not the hottest thing on the streets, but you know, whatever. you got any Chuck Taylor's in your bag? What's that? You got any Chuck Taylor's in your bag? You know what? I've never worn Chuck's. I don't know why. Uh, Drew, nice. that's all you Drew ever used to wear was Chuck's all the time. I never had a pair. You never had a pair? JB, I didn't know that's you had a pair. That's the first shoe. I was going to say. That's like the only <laughs> shoe back when you were Besides kid. them, you guys yeah, might flyers. not know what the SS Kresge specials were. No. <laughs> Kresge? You, you <laughs> remember the department store downtown? Yeah, right. Absolutely. I know what Oh, my <laughs> God. I mean, not from ever being there, but I yeah. know what it is. Jumpman just made a new friend. Yeah. I can relate. You see how I got I see that. The bit. two old guys in the room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, yeah. the, the Chuck Taylors, though, every time I've ever put a pair on, they're uncomfortable as hell. It's just a big slab of rubber with, I mean, I know it's all style. Here's what's uh, different, though. Nike bought them. Oh, so they've replaced the sole. There you go. They See, got that you think I don't line. know anything about uh, I'm just saying. Uh, <laughs> putting it out there. <laughs> that's why I, I didn't say it. You said but it. But that's why they're making a comeback. That, that's true. They are making Those a comeback. Those were the shoes back with Bob Cousy and, and Bill Russell and them. They wore them like they was like some Air Force One. Don't you find <laughs> it funny, though, that it's like a lot of like ankle injuries now? As opposed to back then, like you never even heard of. Not them. right. Nobody wrote an ankle, and it's just literally canvas and rubber. And you roll your ankle out there just <laughs> trying to do a defensive slide. <laughs> right, D Rose. <laughs> like you no, got the most technology in his shoe. It's because no one ever jumped back then to That's land on someone else's <laughs> ankle. Right. Four inch vertical all set shots <laughs> and underhand free throws. That's set back when the basket was still up there. <laughs> <laughs> that, I, I will say this: basket. I have a pair 
that I wore on once. I think I showed. Didn't I bring it to the basement one time? My chucks from like 1978. Or yeah, something? they were still coming down the stairs the, after you got uh, them. <laughs> size 15 <laughs> chucks. Jumpman got jokes. Jumpman, jumpman. Uh, number nine, the Nike Women's Look uh, Look of the City Quick Strike Pack. Uh, definitely look out for that. I should have put pictures up here. Um, number eight, the Hype Beast Special Edition New Balance 580 Land and Space Pack. Um, definitely a dope concept. I mean, it's really one place to go. One shoe looks like it's in outer space. One shoe looks like it's on the moon. So, uh, number seven, Billy Special Edition Reebok Club C85 Tricolor. Uh, number six, the Adidas D Row Seven Knicks or Solar Red, whatever they want to call it. Seven, seven uh, Knicks. Yeah, I'm um, I'm looking forward to that shoe from an aesthetic standpoint. Um, I saw Nightwing do um. A review on it. He said it was pretty dope. We got the prime net with the boost all around. Yeah. I'm a big fan of boost. Even though I'm Nike guy, the boost technology is very, very comfortable. I've heard. Very I've definitely heard. And hopefully these come in a size 15 so I can partake in the boost they technology. They do. You just got hit up East Bay. Oh, Villa doesn't Villa doesn't have them? No, nah, not on 15. <laughs> y'all should. How. Y'all I got a size 14 and 15 section in my store. Those on the left wall. I got a retro one, a retro one <laughs> mid, <laughs> some Z Fluxes. And there's some ultra TXs. That's what that's I that's the music we're gonna play anytime I feel like Guru's gonna go on a tangent. Like, <laughs> like uh, <laughs> but y'all should though. Like y'all are in Ann Arbor. Yeah, we're gonna. So you would think all those be, athletes walking around? Yeah, they they coming in there more now. So we trying to push. But it was like like it was like an eighth grader came in there in the thirteen. Wow. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, number five, and I'm going back to get these. I I got caught slipping on these. The Reebok question A five. That's yes. um, the shoe based on the Jada Kiss commercial. Mm. Uh, number four, A6 Jail. I'm guessing it says Veg Tan Pack. Um, oh, l- love that shoe. Um, they go up to a size 14, so shit out of luck. Number three, we have the Nike LeBron Soldier 10. I wish there was another name for this. Ohio <sighs> State. Are they I'm trying not... to do like Big Blue? I, I know, man. Everything well, we do. Ohio just respect. gotta follow. I know. We he had Toledo had, first, I, and they I, had to come. I know he been following, and he if he'd have went to college, he'd have went to Ohio. Uh, he said he would have no he he went to Kentucky. Oh. Who? He uh, said he would have went to Kentucky. So what the hell then? So he slapped him, but they get right. No, no, no. I would have went to your school, but I mean, he sponsors what Akron University and Ohio State, so he did it for the home. But he would have went to Kentucky. Kyle Perry was one. I mean, he was a number one rated player in the, when he came out of high school. So Ohio State who's does not the best deserve. coach for one and dones. So when does Kyle Perry, uh, LeBron, Akron, Zips you come out? I, I don't know, right? That's oh, they did actually. <laughs> <laughs> the Nike LeBron Seven was the Akron color. It was. It had the Akron, blue and yeah, gold. Or, yeah. yeah, and it had the uh, the zip on the the logo oh, okay. on the inside. Yeah. Oh, look at Mark. Yeah. I'll, stop, I'll stop giving him shit. Okay. <laughs> but anytime I can give him <laughs> LeBron or Ohio State, the entire yeah. state of Ohio is just on my shit list. Uh, number two, we got the Air Jordan Retro 12 GS Baron. I'm jealous because that yes. was. Oh, they should have came. I they got my son a pair, though. He's yeah. one, though, but I got him, got him a pair, though. But yeah, they should have came high. in men's. I know oh, it's going to be a lot of small footed men out there. Trying to rock I'm them. not a puppet. <laughs> I'm a real boy. No, they was no. probably going in like on them pink boys. Uh, no, <laughs> that was bad. I'm telling you, I wanted to go in, especially that one picture that floated with the oh, four guys. Oh, yeah. The whole outfit. Yeah, I had, yeah, I know. They they went shopping together, um, tried on clothes together. And then, number one, we have the Nike Kyrie 2 GS School Bus. Beep, beep. Yep. Dope concept. Dope shoe. What can go wrong? So uh, um, I actually hoop them. I got two pair of coveries. I got the uh, Cavs color ones, the navy blue and gold, and I got the black Hiroshima pair. I hoop them on. They actually have good grip and they're comfortable. So they, a lot of they look comfortable. Ways. They do look nice. They, they do. Like, yeah, those I, I got to give it to them. Those were designed after a motorcycle, so that's why <clears throat> the traction underneath is in the oval shape and it comes up. Right. What? <laughs> <laughs> Jump man is killing the music. <laughs> uh, uh, ugliest really. I know. Yeah, he's gonna put it. Uh, White Ranger says he's gonna put a light in, so he can just smack the light. <laughs> uh, ugliest release of the week. Uh, she was horrible. Super ugly. The Rick Owens Geo Basket High Top. Look it up um, or don't. I prefer wow. you don't, just to save yourself the trouble of trying to gouge your eyes out. Like, this shoe was horrible. I don't know why they put it out there. And I, I'm interested to see how much this shoe costs because it looks like 
they want to sell it for an expensive amount. So, uh, ugly honorable mentions: the Nike Air Zoom Pegasus Thirty Three Brazil Rainforest Print Pack. It's as ugly as it sounds. So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> take my word for it. Uh, random piece. Hold on, real quick, real quick, before we get the news. Random piece of overpriced bullshit. There's two shoes. Ralph Simon's special edition Adidas Fall Winter 2016 collection uh, is being sold at Neiman Marcus in Barney, New York. Or Barney's. Is it Barney's? Or, I don't know, you know, somebody. Barney. Somebody hoity toity would be so offended that I. Good. I know. Let me spell it. Let spelled it. Oh. What? a desperate attempt to fill 24 hours of programming. Here's some bullshit that happened somewhere today. We've got some footage here of the bullshit, which began just after 3 o'clock this afternoon. Basically. Uh, those shoes go for like $330 and $415. Like any Between those two numbers, they're not worth any of those prices. Also, the Soulfly Special Edition Jordan Eclipse SP Capsule Collection, uh, they're going for $200 each. Uh, they'd be lucky to get a hundred out of me. Uh, those um, shoes are actually on sale at my job. Not they, that mo- that model, but not that colorway for like fifty nine and seventy nine dollars. Exactly. Well, when That's, I saw two hundred dollars, I was like, "Whoa!" Yeah, because it's SoFly. SoFly is that his brother in law store? Yep. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's That's why. I, I That's kind of why. questioned when I saw the He Got Game in store. I mean, with Ray Allen, I saw all these things. They got their own retro thing. Like, how are they getting this? And then I then I caught when and read that um, yeah. he married his Joy married his sister. Right. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> What's going on, everybody? It's your boy, Mike Ricks, man. And you're listening to the number one sneaker show, the Sneaker Box Podcast with SneakerBarDetroit.com. Hey, you want some good talk? Listen to my boys. Get you some. Yes, uh, go on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there's a bunch of shoes coming out next year. Get your money ready. Um, you got the Pure Money Air Jordan 4. Woo! Uh, yep. The Royal Air Jordan 1. High. OG is rumored to return next year as well. So... As long as it got that Shattered Back Boy leather, I'll be... It needs to be. Yes. The one that just came out was just ridiculous. Here's the. Here's what's funny, because I... Remember, I used to bitch about this, too. The When they started with the... New iteration of the OG Air Jordan ones, they were still had that mid cut, even though they had the Nike Air on there, and yeah. that's why they're going back and yeah. coming out with these super same. OG. Co- yep, they're going back to the ultra high tops yep. with the um, yep. OG colorways. Yep. This is why I'm not going out to the black and golds. I guarantee you, as soon as I go to buy the black and gold joints, they're going to announce we come back out with them, and I'm gonna waste a thousand. What was it? It's going for like seventeen hundred dollars now. Hashtag patience. Yeah, I'm yes, being patient. Hold on. So uh, hold on. those resellers. <laughs> oh, they died. Yeah, you were about they, to take they the L on they that fade. one. I see a lot of stuff on eBay now that used to be ridiculously priced. Now it's and getting higher. eBay, modern. I mean, the resellers are taking a major hit. They got to. You know, I go in stores when I go to different cities and states, and I mm-hmm. see stuff on shelves. It just takes me back. To the eighties, the good old 90s. days. Yeah, yeah, even uh, like two thousand eight, two thousand nine, when uh, um, I had got my uh, varsity red sixes for like one nineteen at Puff of Reds. I ended up getting the uh, the varsity red, the white and varsity red sixes at Foot Locker. So it does take you back to a time where you get to catch them on sale at a deal. The thing is, back then they just had so many out that they would sit and they're going to sell a post. And now that people are not buying them and being more selective with yep. it. You know, and that's why they sitting. But you know, it works for me either way. If you got some patience, you can catch a deal. So easily. I've always had a question for you. I meant to ask you <laughs> last year in the basement. <clears throat> when do you think? Which year mm-hmm. do you think the hype really started with the shoes? I say two thousand six around with the DMP. Pack. I was going. I, that was where I was going. From there on, with those two thousand six retro releases moving forward. I think it was a gradual. It it gave you a glimpse with those packs, the DLP pack. Because actually, not the countdown pack. I got my eights and fifteens for two hundred dollars at Mister Allen's. That was two thousand nine. Yeah. I say about two thousand ten, two thousand eleven. That's when it started to incline. Because what picked up first was the cool gray releases and the Concords and the Space Jam. They started. The Building that momentum. There. You yeah. think it started with the 11s, not yeah, with uh, like started. the cool gray fours. Yeah, uh, and 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 the releases um, back then 
in 2006, 2007. Yeah, because back, it started, it didn't just go up, it started with the holiday releases. So when I worked at Finish Line, the Cement Threes and the Bread Fours were the holiday, the Thanksgiving releases and the 11s, the Space Jams, the Space Jams, the Concords, and the other ones were the Christmas release. And after that, it started spreading. So then when it got out of hand, I will say about 2012. I remember in 2009, I went to. The, I was able to walk into the store. It was only yeah. two people. It was only me and two or three other people online for the True Blue Threes. Yeah, True like, Blue Three. Yeah, those sat. Like and you know what I'm saying? Head. Like that's the so like when I hear people bitch about oh the shoes are sitting, that lets me know that you're not really giving a shit about the shoe because most people that want right. the shoe aren't complaining because mm. they ain't able to get them. So I'm like you know yeah, like that, yo the, bad. That's that is <laughs> what I will say then because True Blue. Uh, one of my managers at Finish Line, he had got a pair of uh, cement threes from Alabama Finish Line that had sent them up to him. Right. For himself, uh, like one hundred and nine. You know what's funny though, because I know I ain't gonna say his name, but somebody bought a bunch of uh, the OVO white twelves for a ridiculous price, and they're talking about coming. They haven't come back out yet, have they? This year, but they are supposed to be coming back out. So he's about to take a major hit. I mean, when I say ridiculous price, I'm I'm talking like stupid. Wow. <laughs> like stupid price. Like he, there's no way he's not taking an L. Um anyway, uh also returning next year are the Royal Pewter and Copper Phone Posits. Uh they're coming back next year as well. So oh, um I, I gotta get those Royal ones. I, you know, I, I got a pair of the Royals that came out in two thousand eleven, but you know that bottom starts to turn yellow, it just don't look right. Them and the coppers. It's you so funny. I passed up on the Royals. That's when I was up going to school up in uh Ann Arbor before I came back. I went and got I said, you know what? I said, I'm going to get this Xbox first because I'm trying to be rational. Like, the Xbox, you'll get more play out of, right? This is before the sneaker out. It took off, right? The phones are still sitting. They're on sale. I was like, man, I'm about to I'll get this Xbox, do the smart thing with it, and I'll come back. When I came back, the phones were gone. Then a year and a half later, on eBay for like $600. So yeah. By the like, end of this show, White Ranger's thumb is going to be sore <laughs> from pushing that button. Like, but I'm ready for the Coppers and the Royals, man. That's the original. Original. I mean, the Royals were original colorway. Oh, the man. Coppers God played on the penny. Uh, all right, so we talked about it earlier. Ohio State responds to Michigan's Jordan deal with new Nike LeBron gear. Uh, an article written by Brandon Richard for Soul Collector. <clears throat> a week after Michigan debuted his new Jordan brand gear and uniforms, Ohio State flaunted his apparel deal for potential recruits. Buckeyes football coach Urban Myers uh, sent out a couple of tweets showing off newly acquired pieces from LeBron James's signature Nike line which included the Nike LeBron 13 low, uh, team-exclusive colorways of the Soldier 10, and custom jackets. Below it, the caption read, Do everything right and be rewarded. Shipment of new at King James shoes is here for the champions of our program. Bullshit. The Jordan versus LeBron gear is another interesting wrinkle to college football's biggest rivalry. It's not a rivalry. We've been kicking their ass. Like, they've been good like lately, but overall, we've been killing them. Uh, after signing a lifetime deal with Nike last December, it's been rumored that LeBron will follow in the footsteps of Jordan with his very own brand under the Nike umbrella. I told uh, you that, though. Like, last year. I, I didn't disagree. That, I told you that he was going to get it. And here's what's interesting about this thing, that is that Michigan and Jordan, man, is the, they're like the OGs in the college. And then Ohio State is the up-and-coming I've been taking over lately. So it's kind of like Jordan and Michigan, like the OGs who've been successful in the Ohio State is that the lately been good and being great at it. So that's an I mean, take. you know, what I'm saying that, that that's that's what I that's why I'm looking at it. I mean, yeah, to, I'm a to Michigan. That, a Michigan to that fan. point, though, um, mm-hmm. so if you're a recruit, because a lot of it's about recruiting. Uh, what holds more cachet? Because a lot of these, you know, eighteen, nine, they never saw Jordan play. He's been retired for twenty years. But here, this is what team he has such Jordan. appeal, though. Who? Oh, I absolutely. The brand of Jordan is right. phenomenally huge. Right. But can LeBron get there because he's still actively playing? What, what do you think is bigger for a 20-year-old? I think— That's a good question. That, you know what it is? It depends on what you want to do, right? If you go going to Ohio State, you're going to go to— Right now, if you want to get in the NFL next two years, Ohio State's the way to go. U of M is, <laughs> U of M is in their rebuilding standpoint. So Jim, Jim Har- with Jim Harbaugh, they're getting that respect back amongst the recruits. And then once they start, you know, two more, three years of winning— They'll be on Ohio State level as far as okay, we sending some guys to school because you gotta be honest with it. You know when you had Ohio State had three quarterbacks that could have went to the NFL. You know what I'm saying first, second, and third round. So you of them hasn't got to that yet. Talent wise, with Jim Harbaugh, he's getting them there. 
that's why he's putting his works. No, that's why Nick Saban is looking at it complaining because he's about to turn his program around. Nick Saban, and everybody else sees it. So right. that's as, what as I far, say. You're recruit and say everything's equal. So let's say it's not mm-hmm. Michigan, Ohio State. Mm-hmm. Let's say it's um, I don't know two, Clemson and uh, Clemson and South Carolina, and mm-hmm. one has Jordan, one has LeBron. Do you think that? I mean, do you think that would be a difference maker for a recruit, and which one holds more cachet? I think this is where it's going to come down to: what are you in getting? Because if your school is getting like what Oregon is getting, PE yeah. and Jordans, Ooh, that man. guys want to say, "Yo, I got," they yeah. want to be the the top guy amongst that their friends. Line, they yeah. They're going to go get. They're going to go that route. But you know, and it depends on the sport too, because yeah. football players aren't getting those shoes. Like here, uh, Oregon football players are so the or if they get the basketball shoes, yeah, the, yeah, are they? Those, yeah. Oh, they shit, got the, yeah, they okay. got the Oregon nines, the nines yeah. yeah, those are football teams. The the night basketball oh, team didn't shit. have them. No yeah, <laughs> they wore those with yeah, their track shit. suits. Yeah, I mean, I ain't gonna lie, like yeah. Yeah. I ain't even gonna lie with Michigan. <laughs> when when uh, Nike and Jordan, Brand, you know, when they announced they're gonna come back to Michigan, like that's the first thing I thought of. Like, don't PEs are gonna be tough. Um, I want to ask a question though. I was just saying, it'll, that'll be a real interesting battle within Nike itself. But it depends well, they on win. those two brands. To they, win. Like Nike yeah, they win. They win either way. Yeah. No, 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 I know. But it's kind of a good competition. Oh, yeah, very good. To keep crazy. I think the they'll is, throw does... out the gear to oh, Michigan oh, and see yeah. if Ohio State. I mean, they're the people that are designing the gear probably be you sitting know in a funny? room like this just going crazy. The first guy when they, um, what was that, midnight when they started selling the new yeah. Nike Michigan gear, the first guy there was a guy from Ohio, mm. from Columbus, Ohio. Huh. Yeah. Yeah, so I went. I went down. Lost, that. Who's lost? I, I went down into that. I went down into that event. That was. That he saw was, the light. That was fun. Yeah, yeah, I know. He finally saw the light. He started drinking the water in Ohio. Yeah, yeah. That was. I went to that. That was a fun event, though. But I think this is going to be dope either way. LeBron did it for his high school with three years ago. He redesigned their uniform, so he kind of carrying over. You know, Ohio State been wearing LeBron stuff for now. It's now that they got the brand deal done, he can they can kind of. I got. It's going to be interesting. What, what do you guys think? When is uh, say Under Armour going to make a Steph line for football? They are. They did sign with Davidson. I don't know football okay. though. And basketball. They, got, they got Notre Dame too. They signed last year, and they got Miami. Is Notre Dame Under Armour now, or are they yeah. Adidas? Yeah, they're Under yeah. Armour. Yeah. Okay, and um, they got Miami too because Miami. That's right. Nike had right. Miami for twenty five years. Yeah. So Under Armour got them now. So, but what I, my, I guess the point is, do you see other schools maybe using their big celebrities? Would an Adidas school yeah. use uh, Kanye or something? Oh my god! Well, yeah. I. No, I, I see know, that happening. So doing it, they're doing it now. It's all about selling merch. But that's like, the only thing that kind of be iffy about that because Kanye is part of the lifestyle branding. Because part of these athletes are more the from the sports standpoint. But if it can so, sell, yeah, of course it's gonna sell. <laughs> well, yeah. But you know what I'm shocked at is Auburn. Yeah, with what Cam did, yeah. he's with Under Armour, mm-hmm. right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Don't they wear Nike? Nike? They wear Nike now. Yeah, they wear Nike. I think Auburn I, is with. I thought Nike they were. I thought they were Under Armour still. No, I think they were Nike. They were when he. Well, oh, they that, should be with Under Armour. They they yeah, okay, I'm, 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 I'm not to look sure. That up. I think they were. I, yeah. Last time I seen the pictures, they, they were last they, year when they was rounding them up in the locker room. It was Under Armour. Yeah, yeah, okay, my bad. Okay. okay, I remember them. No, I, Nike. I thought that they wore like the the shirts underneath, but I don't know if they were wearing the shoes. Oh no, no, they was Under Armour. Like, sure. Real quick question though, because we talked about this on uh, on um, your guys' podcast. Um, somebody brought up the point of the weirdness of having a basketball logo on a football jersey and should the basketball re- be replaced on the Jumpman logo with the football? No. Jumpman, I'm going to let you answer that one. <laughs> should U of M have the Jumpman logo? Yeah, yeah, like pretty much. What? Jumpman, 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 them boys up to something. <laughs> they are up to something mm-hmm. in an arbor. They are. Um, and I'm I, with it. Because when he said it, I was just kind of like, that does seem sound kind of weird. Like, foot, basketball. But see, logo. you always viewed it as a brand. I know, but the way and, he framed it. Yeah. But he, because he's, he's a Jordan fan. He's, okay. He's always known Jordan the basketball yeah, player. Yeah, that's true. It's just, it did seem, the way yeah, he framed he, it, it was just like, Damn. I got in a big argument with him off the air again about it. <laughs> and oh, Surprise, surprise. <laughs> and I said, well, did you have a problem when Jeter wore him on his cleats? Get a basketball player on his cleats uh, and his batting glove. Yeah, you know. just like the, he, there's a couple baseball players that wear Jordan yeah. brand. A uh, yeah. Griffey, I see Griffey uh, tweeted like like seven players wearing his team shoes now. They got I think McCutcheon's from the Pirates. He got the the, okay. the, the, the swing man on there, but it's black and yellow with his numbers on there. But that's still baseball though. Yeah, that's what right. I'm saying. So that's like, I was just talking in terms like because the way he, the man cross framed sports, it, like, yeah, yeah, it, it, I, it, the way he framed it made it sound weird. I'm like, damn, like. You made me not like it. I, I think it's because the association has always been with basketball. Yeah, so it's hard mm-hmm. for him to. I keep telling him to get out of his that box. That paradigm. 
Uh, Gabrielle Union is opening a women's sneaker store. Yeah. Uh, an article written by Brandon Richard for Soul Collector. Actress Gabrielle Union is trying her hand at the sneaker business. In an interview with the Covetor, uh, fellow NBA wife Faith Ryan Haslam, and I'm taking y'all thing too, uh, the whole three name thing, that's always annoyed me too. Yeah. So yeah. instead of calling her Faith Ryan Haslam, I'm just going to call her Faith Haslam. Yeah. You're not that important. Yeah, not at all. You need three names. No. I took <laughs> and I narrowed it down from Faith to Faye. Uh, <laughs> confirmed that she and Gabrielle are in the process of opening a women's sneaker store together. However, it doesn't sound like the new space, tentative, <clears throat> tentatively being called Borrowed from the Boys, would be just another spot to buy trendy sneakers. Faith and uh, Gabrielle are thinking high end. Faith said it's going to be a concept store, women's sneaker store, but with the fashion angle. It's not necessarily about having Jordans per se. It's going to be more of the fashion-y thing. I think nice sneakers are a mainstay at this point. Uh, while there's still details to be sorted, Faith says the store will be located in Miami. Uh, also, I guess new store, Spain has an impressive, impressive uh, new sneaker store. An article written by Brandon Doom for Soul Collector. Uh, European sneakerheads have a destination at SVD, formerly known as, anybody want to take this up? Because I'm about to butcher it. Uh, Silva's disguise, whatever, in Barcelona. It's pronounced Gordon. <laughs> uh, the newly redesigned store features two stories of shoes and streetwear, interactive shopping experiences, and even a ping pong table. Uh, the interior is one of the more tasteful table. That's eating up retail space. I know. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Wouldn't it be funny? It would be funny if the store just full of all these ping pong enthusiasts. <laughs> yeah, just take like, over. Know, like no shoes could be so. Don't uh, you just see them chasing down ping pong balls that are rolling under like other displays, <laughs> getting in people's ways? <laughs> no, I was just, I just looked at, I was just intrigued by that Auburn thing. Oh, what's up? <clears throat> they're with Under Armour, but their contract is expiring. So they just made the switch. So they went to Adidas. They're in the switch. Oh, they went to Adidas. Adidas. But I was thinking, you know, Cam is one of their. You would High think, profile yeah. athletes, you think they would stay, but I guess uh, money money talks. Money talks. Money talks. Yep. Uh, let me see. The interior. Oh, check this out. The interior is one of the more tastefully designed ones in the world of sneaker boutiques. Terminator mm. got one wall with a giant glass window looking out at a huge slab of marble. Ooh. Uh, this new iteration <laughs> of SVD opened its doors for business in June. Um, that kind of leads into your next story, though, too. And, yeah. and how big it's getting over in Europe. How big of a market is it in Europe? Uh, um, it's, it's growing. It's growing. You know, Nike's always kind of done that thing, but with Adidas kind of pushing more of a like, because they don't think they play a lot of sports in Europe well, like a, we do, but they're more of larger. So they wear the, the New Balances and, you know, things like nature. So now that Adidas true. pushing the lifestyle more. brand, yeah. they're now getting more into it because they're like, okay, this is some stuff we can wear. You know what Well, I'm actually, huh. it's funny because the inverse is actually happening. Like, Nike is growing overseas, but they're, like, losing – Footing over here in the north in the U.S. Well, Under Armour's really. Well, yeah, they got competition on Adidas, really like you said, is growing. Under Armour's coming, so you got mm-hmm. more competition. Uh, well, let's get into it. Nike is the worst performing Dow stock this year. Uh, an article written by Riley Jones for Soul Collector: Nike stock is tanking despite increased visibility from the Olympics. Uh, CNN Money notes that Nike is the worst Dow stock of 2016 so far, down more than 10 percent. Uh, but I, I mean, I think Why? I should put like this qualifier in it. Like the stocks are always like speculation and everything plays into stocks. But uh, anyway, uh, furthermore, Nike's most recent quarterly earnings fell below its forecast. Oh, that's why. Yeah, that's right. That's Sorry why. about. Do I go back to the speculation? Like because they didn't sell enough, mm-hmm. they foresee them continuing that trend the rest of this year. Not necessarily the case, but uh, what's worse is future orders. Are, also missed the mark. Although Nike's doing well in China and Western Europe, it's facing heavy competition in North America from the likes of Adidas and Under Armour. Uh, Nike is all, they taking L's all the way down. Uh, they're losing to Adidas and Under Armour during the Olympics. In an article written by Brandon Richard for Soul Collector, according to a report by Forbes, uh, Nike's stock has risen just 1% in a week, while Under Armour is up 2.3%, and Adidas is leading the pack at 5.9%. This following a quarterly earnings report in which Adidas announced that North American sales are up 26%. Wow. Uh, Nike stock has dipped during the past two Olympics after experiencing a 4 to 19% growth during six summer games from 1984 to 2004. Uh, Bespoke Investment Group co-founder Paul Hickey said, you have increased competition. Under Armour is a public company out there now competing for more sponsorships 
it's more expensive more expensive for the companies involved. So tying that back into what we was talking about. Yeah, it's getting harder and harder to fight for right. different sponsorships. Uh, what I was kind of going to say is that this is the biggest reality check Nike could get right now. It's a yep. competition. For a lot of times, they were just putting out weak quality, and what you going to do? It? These ain't putting out now on our March night. It's, it's a, a blow in the air, so you had to buy it. Last year was a terrible Jordan year. It was a terrible Jordan year. From our refresh, I could I, when we did our grand opening with our refresh, mm-hmm. it's just like, like this is not really good. So it's like name five shoes you really wanted last year, right? <laughs> you know what I'm saying. So this is the big. And then the Adidas, A6, all them brands, New Balance. They say, okay, you're gonna have the athlete portion sold up. Only Under Armour can compete with you, and Adidas can stick their foot in. Right. We're gonna beat you in the lifestyle brand because Nike can't make lifestyle shoes outside of Air Force One. And then what we're gonna get? We're gonna we're gonna the same thing you did with athletes and the sports brand. We're gonna do. With lifestyle brands, we're gonna get athletes, we're gonna get high celebrities to do these Puma too, right? To, to, get, to push this <coughs> lifestyle brand. And what hold Kanye? Kanye Adidas kind of got the form of Nike didn't appreciate him. You let two people walk yesterday, last year. You let Kanye walk. You let Steph Curry walk. Yep. And they turned into your biggest competition. Yeah, Steph Curry because they didn't know yeah. his name. Yeah. So I just, know. <laughs> so it's just like Stephon like, Urkel. They didn't like, change the PowerPoint either. <laughs> I know. Yeah, that was ridiculous. Yeah, that's like, that's but see, that's that's the problem. That sounds like I would do. That's the problem <laughs> that Nike had always had. <laughs> the arrogance. <clears throat> right. And they only reach out to certain people. Yeah. Right? <clears throat> Where you see Adidas and Under Armour, you look on social media, you look on YouTube, you see um, sneaker people getting shoes. Mm-hmm. You see sneaker people being taken to events. Nike does it, but not, to that not level. as much right. as Adidas and Under Armour mm-hmm. do. And they're, they're like giving of their product. They're engaging the and, audience. And, and they didn't they, have yeah, to. Nike didn't have to for the longest time. That's right. true. But, but see, in order to keep what you have, you, keep doing you have yeah. to Good. reach out to people. Yep. You can't reach out to people when you want to. Right. Because some people may, okay, well, I'm getting this. Now it's right. too late yep. for you to come in. You know, so they've closed a lot of doors themselves. Yeah, oh, by yeah. by playing hardball, bully ball, or or mm-hmm. just air, playing arrogancy. Nothing lasts forever, saying. you know. Nobody stays number one forever. So, uh, anyway, I'm um, gonna knock out these last three stories. Uh, Trace McGrady says the Nike versus Adidas beef in the NBA is real. Uh, an article written by Brendan Doom for Soul Collector in a new interview with Complex, the seven-time NBA All Star says that he never spoke with Michael Jordan about a proposed trade that would have sent. Scotty Pippen to Toronto in exchange for Tracy, uh, suggesting that they didn't speak because of their opposing sneaker deals. He said, speaking to his interviewer, you know, Nike Jordan guys and Adidas guys don't get along. I don't know if you know that, but you know now. Okay, way, way to be so <laughs> detailed, Tracy. Uh, Tracy also and said subtle. that. I know. <laughs> He's a man of many that was, words. That was a big enough. You don't know, now Nike. you know. <laughs> <laughs> Tracy also said that Nike athletes and Adidas athletes usually aren't friends with with each other off the court. Okay, that's, that's trifling. Uh, speaking on that, Tracy said, the friendship only goes so far. It definitely doesn't extend beyond the basketball court. That's for damn sure. Okay, Tracy. How He's silly. so eloquent. Uh, and, you know, speaking of Adidas, uh, Adidas reclaims number two spot in North America for Under Armour. An article written by John Kim for Sneaker News, Business Insider just reported that Adidas has claimed that number two spot behind Nike, and a lot of credit goes toward the booming sales of the Stan Smith. The classic tennis shoe was the center of a major marketing push and has gained appeal on all fronts from mainstream consumers, sneakerheads, and the fashion forward. Uh, Kanye West's influence on streetwear is undeniable, and while his hands have proven to be uh, alchemic to... uh, Adidas product, it still pales in comparison to sales volume of the Stan mm-hmm. Smith. The Stan Smiths are cheaper and really more available. Than yep, the Yeezys. Easier to produce. If Yeezys were out like Stan Smith, they, his, his numbers would be far as percentage would be booming too. But uh, Adidas will bring its robot staff factory to Atlanta in 2017. 2017 is going to be that year. <laughs> uh, in an article written by Edgar Alvarez for Engadget.com, uh, Adidas recently announced that its stateside production facility, known as Speed Factory, will call Atlanta home. The 74,000 square foot space is set to be fully functional by the end of 2017, and Adidas says it aims to make 50,000 pairs of running shoes there, with the midterm goal of half a million pairs in running in other categories. In comparison, Adidas made 301 million pairs overall last year. The Speed Factory is designed to make products at a rapid pace with an automated assembly line that combines craftsmanship with 
to create footwear and other things in high volumes. Most importantly, the, the Atlanta Speed Factory lets Adidas rely less on Asian facilities, some of which have been scrutinized for unethical labor practices. You think? Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, it's also about endless opportunities for customization in America. Adidas said in a press release, the Speed Factory in Atlanta will create about 160 jobs for human workers. Uh, they didn't disclose what type of work that it would that would entail, though. So, uh, Mike Rich or anybody else, y'all live in Atlanta, I would definitely suggest y'all putting your apps now. Um, so that's it for news uh, this week. If you want to make sure your shoes look just as fresh as when they came out the box, practice safe stunting and go to CrepProtect.com and get your shoes some protection. All right. Uh, sneaker stories that make you go. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna start with this one. Michael Jordan changed a super fan's life. In an article written by Brenda Richard for Soul Collector, last month, 33 year old Mark Bostic, I mean Jeffrey Harrison, <laughs> became an instant <laughs> viral star when he was spotted playing a pickup game in a full Michael Jordan Chicago oh, Bulls uniform. I love that dude. Yeah, he's awesome. You know what's funny? I. He, Here's the thing. Before I read what the rest of the Jordan story. Jordan so long? I saw that guy like months ago. I know. <laughs> uh, Michael? He's not as quick as he used to be. <laughs> uh, it's funny, though, because initially when, you know, he saw that picture, you know, everybody started clowning him, you know. And yeah. I ain't going to lie. Like, I had the urge to do so, too. Luckily, I didn't. Nobody knew who he was, right, Exactly. Though. Nobody, I, right. Nobody knew who he was. But All luckily, right. I didn't, or we didn't do it on the show because he actually has a good story. Uh Little was known about Harrison at the time, but CBS affiliate KRM2 was able to catch up with Jeffrey, and they shed more light on his story. Mm -hmm. Since the age of four, Jeffrey idolized Michael Jordan. He started wearing the full uniform to the court as a tribute to his hero in 2010, and he continues to do so to this day. Jeffrey is also autistic, a condition he says won't get in the way of his passion for playing basketball. In addition to having an opportunity to tell his story, Jeffrey's viral stardom scored on one of the biggest moments of his life, a phone call from Michael Jordan himself, and seeing a video of Jeffrey playing basketball in his uniform, Jordan sent him two boxes of Jordan gear, a personal letter, and gave him a call late one Friday afternoon. Uh, this video, I don't know if we have it, but... Um, what was his reaction? I haven't seen the video of him calling. What was uh, I mean, his reaction? Obviously he, excited. Yeah, like, he, was yeah. just, like, he, was, he was excited. It, it actually was on uh, did they talk World for, Star. Did they talk for a while? Oh, yeah. something nice made it to World Star? They, they replaced it. Miss <laughs> um, Jordan, uh, 23, she's out of Chicago. She is like mm -hmm. the female Michael Jordan. She has okay. all kind of Jordan. She, right. she can follow her on Instagram. But um, she posted it on her social media, mm -hmm. and then World Star reposted, reposted it. it. And you know the video just went viral of him out there playing. And it also she posted the phone call and, and things That's like nice. that from Mike. I'm just surprised World yeah. Star posted something positive. Yeah, was you Jordan know, trying to get off the phone at the end? Was it, uh, <laughs> 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 you know, was he <laughs> trying to <laughs> Gatorade? Gatorade. Right, cool. <laughs> Jeffrey said, "I love you, Mike." It's the phone Gatorade. call. We got, and, we got audio and, and, of his phone call. Oh, this is it. Gatorade. Oh, Gatorade. Right. Gatorade. That's one of my favorite pieces of audio ever. Gatorade. Gatorade. That's all he said. Is it in you? No. Okay, ready? Okay. Jeffrey, are you ready? Gatorade. Gatorade. Is Gatorade. it in you? Is it, is Jeffrey. No, don't like that. Jeffrey, no. But, uh, Gatorade. Gatorade. Is it in you? I, I think it's. I think Gatorade. as of lately, starting with the um, <laughs> him him addressing the police shootings and all that. He's really effort. changed lately, man. I, th I think He's getting soft in his old age. Nike, I think Nike is <laughs> a new chick. <laughs> I think Nike I think Nike has really been pushing for him cuz they see his you no know, the sales are kind of falling. They really like, yo, you got to change your image. Well, no, he's a, he's my bad. I didn't even cut you off. But he recently said like, you know, when he was younger, he thought a certain way and now that he's gotten older, um he views things differently. I believe and, that. And I believe that too. Like, you know, everybody I mean, not to mention, he did do a lot of stuff that nobody knows about, you know. I mean, it's, sometimes you can do stuff for charity and not let the whole world know that you did it. Yeah, God forbid. Uh, I know, right? Um, so, uh, But you know the whole uh, Republicans buy shoes to line that he uh, allegedly Yeah, uttered. he Yeah, that's something he kind of laments because he was so focused on brand and business. And how old is he now? Ah, oh, shit. He's like 51. 51. So what does he have to lose? 53. So now MJ? Damn, he's 53? Yeah, I'm two days older than him. So <laughs> okay, I okay. definitely know that age. <laughs> okay, yeah, because I remember they just had the big 50th thing not yeah, that yeah. long He's ago. 53. But what does he have to lose now? Now he can be yeah, himself. Yeah, he can be himself, yeah. That, that brand is so entrenched. Yeah, but I mean, he can run, look. Not that he couldn't be riskier back then. But Muhammad Ali really said, if, uh, if you are the same person you were 10 years ago, you just wasted 10 years. 
<laughs> oh, that's a great line, dude. Yeah, so I, I totally, I totally agree. I'm happy that because I was on him. We was especially when the Gavin was here. We was on his head about you no know, Mike. Yeah, <laughs> but, like All Mike right. not doing anything. You know, like yo, you got to say something. Especially you being a part you know, of the African American culture. When you well, get see, that, you got to. You, we didn't say, yo, come help everybody. Just speak on it and do what you can. Nobody's asking you to put the weight of the world on your shoulders. <laughs> nah, so that's I what I and – and it's worse that these younger guys, LeBron and KD, are out working you in the philanthropy part and giving more to their communities is making what you're not doing more obvious. Back that's, then, that's not true. everybody was doing I just this. hate putting that on anybody's shoulders Like, because, Lord, God forbid, I become famous. Or I mean, if, you gonna, me, if, I we're gonna, if we we put the goat on your head, why we can't put that on your shoulders? Because it's different. Between, <laughs> no, I mean, there's a difference between. Because here's the thing: like he was the goat because he played basketball. Like what you said, it was a fact. Like it wasn't like, I mean, whether you giving that title or not, it wasn't like it's gonna stop anybody else from giving that mm-hmm. title. And then you know him selling shoes. He sold you a product. You paid for it. That's the end. What of does he, What does he owe you after that? Yeah, that's why. Yeah. That's you know what I'm saying. Like that's why I kind of look at it. And plus, I don't like putting. He's my, such a. I don't like projecting on people, and so I, I just. I, I agree, but he's such a massive cultural icon. I agree. Yeah. No, here's the thing. It's nice for him to say something like yes. I said this he before. Have to though, right? I said this before. This is why I respect people like Jim Brown and Muhammad Ali more because they took the initiative. Nobody had to prod them to do it. They just did it. So I was like, you know, like. If somebody got to force you to do it, is it really the same? You know, like if I got to force you to say I love you, do you really love me? Yeah, so I think with – Someone should have forced OJ. <laughs> the four – the four uh, – terrible. The four uh, – I think that the past four years when a lot of stories are getting out, like the Noriega. OJ's on – he's on race, right? Oh, my bad. I didn't get you out. <laughs> uh, he's just OJ. He was, he's, yeah. his own, he's his own – OJ race. Simpson is his yeah. own race. A murderer. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. Oh I'm my sorry. God, go ahead. Uh, I just know that'll get him going. Um, <laughs> lost my train. I totally derailed it. <laughs> but no, that's the first somebody derailed. <laughs> <Guru. 'Cause, laughs> Confetti should fall right I, now. Every time somebody brings up OJ, I said, "Well, Casey Anthony, we won one." You know what I'm saying? <laughs> wow, <laughs> they're both murderers. Wow, yeah, they're both, both walked away. Yeah, I know. But, um, Put them in a the room there, see who comes out alive. <laughs> <laughs> Fight to the death. Right. That'd be a good slow death. MTV slow oh, yeah. death match episode. That'd be a good one. Uh, you know what? Uh, White Ranger, feel free to play the all button as often as you want on this one. Um, Coach Bobby Knight made Michael Jordan cry during the 1984 Olympics. Oh, I know. What? I know. what happened when they arrested you? What did they do to you? What did they do? What did Bobby do to you, Michael? Just check fingerprints and do the whole thing. That's a that lot they for a basketball team. somebody in. Uh, in an article written by Brandon Richard for Soul Collector, according to Fox Sports, Sam Perkins, who played with Michael Jordan in North Carolina with Team USA, recalls a time when a verbal lashing from Coach Bobby Knight drove Jordan to tears during the 1984 Olympics. Bobby said, oh. I mean, Sam said, Bobby Knight, he got after us. He told Michael that's the worst he ever played. Now, Michael's going to deny this, but he cried. He cried after the game because of the fact that Bobby told him, you should apologize to everybody in here. I waited for my apology because I thought he was actually going to do it, but he actually cried. Do you, oh. do you believe it? Do I believe it? Yeah, yeah. You do really? Yeah, I do. I do. Do you guys? Because Michael Jordan, you know what? It is? I mean, he was young at the time, and he takes you know, back then. He took like everything as like as a assault to him as his character, or his game. Like he used it as like fuel to like. I guess if one person can make him cry, it might be, be Bobby Knight. Knight. Yeah, it would be. Bobby. I, I, I don't know about that. Glue and huh? I don't know about that one. I, I don't think so. I, I, yeah. I wouldn't put it past the ultra like, competitor that he is. I think he would have the next game proven Coach Knight wrong. Yeah. That no, way, but he, that no, he not, probably did. Yeah, like I'm not saying he sobbed. It might have been a few tears <laughs> strickled. Oh. It, it, it could have been the Denzel Washington glory tear. You know, okay. like yeah. you know, like the one tear come down his cheek. But. I wish I and then his, he, he said, cried like he just. And bawled. then it's Bobby yeah. Knight. Yeah. Yeah. Bobby yeah. Knight though. That's it's Bobby right. Knight though too. This ain't Dean Smith. I, and I'm sure <laughs> there was a lot of expletives in there. Oh, it Bobby was, just yeah. wasn't like you. That's the worst. That's the worst. Right. Sam gave you the PC version of what Bobby. What yeah, did I tell you? Yeah, G-rated. Talking? Yes. <laughs> um, yeah, so, I, I mean, a couple of that is Bobby Knight and, you know, Michael Jordan's tendency to take things personally. Uh, I wouldn't doubt that it was some, at least got dusty in the room, put it like that. <laughs> it got a little dusty. 
Um, no one is beyond crying. So that it's, is true. It's, yeah. it's possible. It's possible. Yeah, it's possible. Even Michael Kern. I mean, you see him cry. I mean, there's the meme, right? Like, that's Sam Perkins floating. telling the story. Like, that, <laughs> well, we know you can cry. I like, thought it's they not, were going to retire that with the That LeBron, thing is never going away. I know. The, oh, I know. LeBron, he has the ugliest cry face. I'm sorry. LeBron? <laughs> yes. Yeah. That was a happy cry face, cry face though. Hit, well, I know, but still, it was horrible. <laughs> it was a bad cry face. I'm oh, taking this oh, moment. I'm oh taking this moment. Oh, my God. Yep, yep, Because all last year on the podcast. Play the music. The podcast. <laughs> y'all slandered me. You, why, everybody slandered. Slandered. Y'all gay on my slandered. head. Slandered. Can't beat the gold. Slander is such Steph, a strong word. Steph yeah, Curry's whatever. league. Steph Curry's league. All this. And I sat there. It was at that time. What about, look, bro, no you team. said it was going to beat them, bro. You said the KF was going to beat them. They should have, and they did. The NBA, the referees, and well, everybody else didn't wanna, it's conspire nah, against them. Nah, bro. Come on, Draymond kicked somebody in the I'm previous you, round. You three grazed, times it didn't get suspended. When exactly. He does it, the fourth, he does it to LeBron. Then he grazes LeBron's crotch. And all of a sudden, oh, that's we hate. can't have him touching no, LeBron. No, no, no. Look at the legs of it. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Uh-oh, here comes Jump Man. A- another man uh-huh. going to step over your head. We're going to have problems. And put his sex right, on, right between sex. your eyes. How many <laughs> sex does LeBron have? Hold on. You know what I mean. You know what I mean by sex. No, no, You can have on You can have on boxers. You can have on a jock strap. You can have on compression pants. He's still I'm putting his sacks hey, on his head. Hey, I, but there's multiple sacks. That's, that's a natural reaction, Guru. Uh, okay, okay. That's what, a natural what, reaction. I, exactly. I'm not going to sit here and say that he didn't, he didn't provoke his him. Sex. It was a smart move. It was a smart move by Brian. I didn't say Everybody that he didn't provoke him. A smart Ryan, move? No, no, no. no, no. That's Cause a risky Because no, no one blamed him. Because Ryman provoked uh, Carl Malone all the time. They got him texts that put the bulls up. Uh-huh. That, that, so look, at the, look at the time that they was playing. What? That wouldn't even have been a foul back in the nineties. Mm-hmm. What? Yeah, right. Saying, I know. That would have been a provoking. I ain't say the the the, uh, the level of the foul. I'm talking about the uh, the provoking. He was playing chess move. They do it to Bron all the time. Dallas did it to Bron. They, they did got it in his the nineties. Look at how they close the clothesline, Mike. Yeah, come on, Bron. I got pictures when Paul Pierce grabbed Bron by the shoulders and a uh, horse neck and Jordan Crawford. You know what? You know what? Traps. But you know what? Couples that is when you see him just throw himself. Like out of bounds, like he got shot by a cannon. Yeah, like he, he, he hasn't did that. He hasn't did he that. He got elbowed by his own teammate. He, he said, like he "No, that was this high. year." He ain't did it. He ain't did that since Miami. So you came. You can't he say did no. that this year. Nah, 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 he no, he out. even though he a Brian hater, he no. hasn't did his, his own Miami. teammate hit him and he threw himself That's into half court. court, bro. I well, it doesn't matter. Right My man balled out in every single category and he beat the Warriors. And I'm still here. Probably. Now, I my now, ultimate word today. and I'm not. I'm not gonna say he didn't ball out. He balled out. Kyrie ball, Kyrie ball along with But him. without that Draymond suspension. I went to the petting zoo. Off. It would have been different. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Game five. Without, without, but without the sack but, gate. Uh, my thing is, you. Sack gate. Not, sack if gate. it was three. It was, <laughs> now, listen. Sack, if it was, sack gate. I would give you that wholeheartedly 100% if it was 3-2 or 3-3. Three, three, but you were up 3-1. So you still had two more games, three more games, two of them at your house. But, but that, 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 that one game, was, that was a momentum killer. They would have ended but it. No that one, next there's game. no one to blame. No doubt for that. No, if you tell me, if Pippen, you tell Ultim- me, that's if true. ultimately, that's true. Yes. But put yourself <laughs> in his I know. spot. Yes. Mother put his sack on my head. I'm doing the same thing. Yeah, I know sex. I know he put even, both. Even with, <laughs> he put all his sex, <laughs> even with three on tests. Draymond Green's head. Sometimes Iverson you lose. Did the Tyron Lue. Did Tyron do he, he lost it. I agree. He lost it because. But Iverson didn't put his sex. <laughs> yeah, come on. He didn't put his sex on him, though. He's. He dangled him in front of his face. <laughs> what are you talking about, bro? He, you acting like he Iverson did a hula did dance in his face. <laughs> Iverson long sacked him. Oh. Yes. <laughs> he did that. You can't say that. Tyron LeBron, Lue did LeBron said he is on Draymond's <laughs> phone. you got to remember, too, Tyron Lue just happy to be on the court. Like, Draymond Green, he been starting. You know, like, it's different. <laughs> Man, I thought about that the whole. I was like, man, sex. Like, he just that, that game was bad because you said because Curry didn't show up that game. Didn't sex. show up game they seven. Was, they were, so, it was they eight were against five. Was, the referees exactly. were letting one team be. Finished. No, that was that was terribly called on both sides. Uh-huh. Guru, they, both were, sides. they were done after that. That took sides. their that took their whole momentum, and then Cleveland cool. got their momentum, and LeBron was on fire after that. No doubt. No, yeah, I'm not going to take nothing from my man played out his mind. I still don't like I'll him. I'll give it to him. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, I, I, You're right. I, I respect I still don't his like him. I respect He would be from game. Ohio, too, of so that is, is yeah, easy for me gotta to You got to respect his game. What? But I'm, I'm just not. You don't have to like him, though. Yeah, I'm just you not. You can respect I, I, someone I, I, He is not MJ, and I'm tired of people 
Oh, he's chasing compare. his ghost. He's chasing his ghost. Right here here, here we go. So, 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 knowledge. Here so comes you knowledge. So, 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 so oh, no. you're okay with, you don't like, because he's from Ohio and that the flop or whatever, but as Detroit people, you're okay because Michael Jordan, the reason why Isaiah Thomas wasn't on the dream team. I hate Ohio it wasn't, for the reason. Read the whole story. <laughs> Read the no, whole first story. of all, we it, agree it, on that. I'm, me and you agree. I don't like the fact that Isaiah wasn't on the team. It wasn't only Mike, but <laughs> me not like Ohio. Magic and Larry is a didn't want well, who had the most influence on that oh, team? Oh, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> who was the best player on the dream team? So who gonna have the most influence? Was it Christian Leitner? Christian Leitner wasn't the best. Oh, uh, but Barkley actually had led the team in scoring that that's off season. But it was and he let him in three point. Yeah. Him and MJ tied yeah. in three point. Yeah. So I just percentage. think that if you're gonna hate for as a Detroit fan, you gotta have some type of. Uh, no, I'm Mike. a Michigan fan first. I, I hate Ohio with the passion. The whole oh. state. No, I was uh, probably one of the only ones in. I will Michigan say this: that was a Bulls. They turnpike right is right excellent, right. and they have like the best uh, <laughs> turnpike. I can't. The thing I can't excellent. stand about Ohio. The best rest stop. I, I can't stand about Ohio stops. is the 55 miles per hour speed limit on the freeway. Well, that's why they do it. They got those. They got to pay for those cool hats that highway patrol <laughs> wears, man. man the county mountains. You go to see the point there. You, I mean, I don't have and you better not step out your car without it on. Oh my god! Uh-uh. Why? You, well, you, you get a write up. <laughs> really? Yeah. Well, because right. they look so cool. Back in the day, we had to wear our hats. <laughs> Please. You know, I remember I was yeah. out chasing somebody that bailed out of a stolen car. This was back when I was in uniform. And I left my hat in the car, and a supervisor show up. Uh-oh. Oh, you, you, you caught the subject. But where's your hat? I'm like, mother. Where's your hat? I'm a, oh, hold on, hold no, on. Stop, stop, stop running, man. Yeah, I'll go I back to go my hat. hat. I'll let him go. I know. Sorry. Pause. Time out. <laughs> yeah, it used to be a hat rule. Oh, my God. So the hat's more important than the I know. There's so much more things to worry about. <laughs> it ain't about. like it's a helmet. It's going to protect you. That's no, I only, yeah. only took on a it drug kingpin. Cool, but, you know, yeah, let's, let's bitch about my hat. Yeah. Uh, all right, anyway, let's take a break real quick. Uh, we'll be back in a few. Good, it's your boy Tony D2Y checking in once again. You are now tuned into the number one sneaker show, the Sneaker Box Podcast on SneakerBarDetroit.com. Are you stupid or something? I'm as stupid as a stupid does. He, he offered his phone. No, he deleted yeah, his phone. Quite the when he conversation. The phone, he offered it. Oh, he offered it before that. What? His the, phone. The later, the Did he later, offer it? The, the yeah. They made it sound like he didn't offer the, yeah. it. Because the NFL has controlled the narrative from the beginning. That's what I heard. This is what I love in the NFL. told Giselle everything that was going on in that phone. That's that. The flater. <laughs> yeah, that the phone. flater in there. Whatever. Yeah. And then the part with Tom Brady drug is like, bro, sometimes you got to know when, when the fight starts battles. He didn't do it. He didn't, yeah. They were draining the players. That money's coming from... The players, Junior, you know, everybody puts in, though. So, like, well, you all put this money, and I'm draining I'm it. I'm surprised they didn't but, take it to the Supreme Court. Uh, they denied it. They sent it back. Like, they I know. Should, I'm just they saying. should. Oh, yeah. They oh, should. But God, the problem I'm is that sure. Union made a bad, a bad I mean, deal. Honestly, I grew tired of it, like, after a week it start, mm-hmm. after it started. But uh, in any event, this week is stupid. Uh, Paul George gets crossed over in the Olympics and blames the sneakers. Uh, an article written by Brandon Dune for Soul Collector, the USA basketball squad demolished China. And a 119-62 victory in their first game at the 2016 Rio Olympics. But not without the Chinese team pulling out a few highlights. Uh, one of those highlights came when... <laughs> anybody want to sign this up? Zhao Zhiwei. I don't know. <laughs> Sit Paul George to the say floor. It's pronounced Gordon. I don't know. If you say, it's funny how when you say stuff with confidence. No people, one knows. Yeah, nobody knows this. Because <laughs> no one knows who Zhao Zhiwei is. Nobody. Uh, they sent Paul George to the floor with the move at the end of the fourth quarter. Uh, this video of it, I don't know if you have it. After the game, Paul denied actually being crossed. We all saw it, man. Blaming his sneakers for the spill. He said, I didn't get crossed. My shoes. Check out the shoes. I had too much grip. Uh, <laughs> it wasn't the shoes, money. Yeah, nah, bro. It was your ankles. <laughs> <laughs> fragile ankles. That wasn't the spike on the Uh In case you wanted to know, Paul was wearing the Nike Hopper Dunk 2016 when he had his ankles broken. Mm. Uh, his first signature shoe, Nike model. Uh, or his first signature Nike model shoe is re- rumored to be releasing soon, mm. the PG one. So I saw those. Uh, is he is, is he still wearing those in the Olympics? Because I not, wouldn't. I mean, if it's getting too well, like man. that. Like, according mm. to him, it's the shoes, so I wouldn't be wearing. Do them. you guys care about the dream team? The dream, like, like the right original? now, the current dream team. Really. I'm putting it in the air. I'm not gonna act like I do. I mean, we don't really call them dream. I don't even think it's a dream team. Man. It's yeah. it's only one dream team to me. It's, okay, uh, uh, but that, US, that's just me. USA basketball. Do you guys care about like what's happening with them? Depends on the team. Depends. Yeah. Like I ain't gonna act like. I mean, honestly, I've been in and out. This I don't really care Olympics. for it no more because the the world competition isn't as good as it was when like 
the 2012 team was playing. The, Do you no, know what they've done the last two games? 2008. They barely won by three. Yeah, the last two games. <laughs> yeah, so. They don't play any defense. It's actually quite hilarious to watch because – no one wants to play defense. It's like an all star mm-hmm. game. It's like an exhibition. Because everybody experience. know they got when they leave there and when they're done with that, they want to over exonerate themselves because they still have to go to training camp and get ready for an eighty two game season. I don't plus know who, who would want to be in the Olympics. I like, would want to go. I one would, time I would be one careful with the Rio because of the corruption, the bribery, the Zika virus, exactly. all of that. So it's just <laughs> why why even put yourself through that? People getting robbed, yeah. swimmers getting robbed at gunpoint. It's like I would have sat that one out. But, like, yeah. yeah, not to mention your career, like you just said, when you get back. You, you got to like start six training weeks, when, six when you get rest time you get, off. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I will go one time just so I, you know, just for the experience and to potentially win a gold medal. Because uh, yeah, how many well. people say they can, you know, how many people yeah. can say uh, they. Uh, no one no one on the 04 team. On the, <laughs> five lot, and three. A lot of them know that oh, man. that's the only medal, not the Larry O'Brien trophy that they're going to get. Well, so, uh, what, three people on there that got one? I mean, but it's it's huh? a select well, few. Well, well, Harrison Barnes, you know they got to pay Clay, tax on that Draymond. too. Yeah, that's dumb. Chris that's from Barnes, last Clay, year. Draymond, they pay tax on what? The medals, really? Yeah. NBA team. Yeah. What's yeah. the worth of them? Five hundred bucks. But would they be? Are they there, real? Say, if are they just gold plated? Go They're silver Steph gold plated. Wanted to go back. A lot of those guys are substitute players for people who decided not to go. LeBron did it twice. I mean, well, you went to six straight finals in two of those years. You went to finals one. Like he was balling six straight years in a row. No. Yeah, it was. Yeah, no time. You know, come on, man. Yeah. That's whack. <laughs> but I guess I guess if you don't go very far in the playoffs, why not? If yeah, you're a superstar. That's true. But why not? You want to represent your country. Oh, absolutely. I, I swear. If I, 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 if I had they, a chance, they, I would want to But when they were winning, though, they had players. You had Kobe. You had Brian, D-Wade, Bosh. Mel. Those guys were going to the playoffs, you know, especially with Brian and Kobe. They were going to the playoffs. I would do it when I'm young. Like, once I get so far in my career, I'm like, all right, y'all young cats. Just like the dunk contest. But the Dream Team, they were older. Well, that was the first Play time they did. That, that was the, the first time, time they had mer- yeah. yeah, that was yeah. awesome. And that the competition was a classic was, combination. Yeah. <laughs> Terrible. That was the best team ever assembled. If yeah. you ask me, even without Isaiah. Uh, ooh. <laughs> and they were. I I'm don't. Sorry. I don't know. I, you know, I'm gonna say this. I don't know because it would have been an interesting match. You got Magic see. Johnson and Michael Jordan on the same okay, team. But my That's thing is, they so, okay, cool though. But you got Magic Johnson telling his career. I want to see John Stockton check Westbrook or Chris Paul. That would have been very interesting. Because okay. John Stockton defense wasn't – he had the smart, the mental intelligence, but sometimes you need an athletic ability to keep up with a Westbrook or Chris Paul. That's where you I would have seen Kobe and Jordan go at it. That's Pippen and Brown would have been a good match. That's Michael. where you That's got the, the, the backboard. Yeah, yeah but my thing is, too, yeah. though, these guys – these you're okay, you, we, you would have killed us down low, but now can David Robinson play beyond the box? Can he play perimeter? Yes. Yes. I guess them other guys, they'll be interesting, though. I'm just saying, who? Really a different type Marcus of Russell? Yeah, Kevin I mean, Love and all that. I mean, you can't, not even, even, you can't even do that. You can't even. That's like a video game. That's no, all, no, that's the only way you, you can gotta, do is a video game from the Dream Team yeah. to the Marcus Cut. No, I'm just no, I'm just saying it'll be interesting because now you have to step out and check Bosch, his shot. You got to check Kevin Love's shot. Chris Bosch, so, Chris, you it's different. It's different. It's different. It's it's different. Chris Bosh when he comes to Toronto. So, like I said, it was two years from Toronto. Can it I, would have been interesting, though. Chris That's what I Can I say out. something about Isaiah? And I want to say, let's take it in this room. <laughs> Not a fan. Uh, what? Oh, me out. neither. Get out. There's the door. Get out. <laughs> what? Me neither. I think, ah, I what? Think, I think he's a bad guy. Never was. As he started. Person. He started Listen. the Jordan rules. He was like, he was upset that Listen, I don't think he was born dude. in Chicago. Raised Mike went yep. there and took over Chicago. Come I on, agree. man, it's 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 a back. Zeke there. was a beast, better basketball player than I, man. I, I'm not saying he wasn't a beast on the court. I'm just not a fan of him. Okay, okay. I'm not a fan. Of, I'm not a fan. At least of I got one. At least either. I got one guy on my side. But on the basketball court, you is you I'm be hard pressed to not, find a better point guard. Man, okay, yes, man, the guy was a beast, man. But once they got that. The bad boy's name. Yeah. Before that, he everybody loved him. He but then was, they said, "Well, okay, people hate us. They say that we hurting people. They say we closed line people. We just gonna be the bad boy." Then they came out with those black shirts. Mm-hmm. You know what he was? And ever since then, he was just a villain. He was Russell Westbrook right with better handles. Yes, yeah, my thing. But every player goes through that villain. Every great NBA player goes through it. Barkley went through it. Kobe went through it. Brown went through it. Miami. Kevin yeah, Mike go KD, through KD, it. KD go out to go it. KD Mike go through it. Everybody Mike, loved him. Who? Mike. Everybody yeah, Mike go Mike. through the Mike, villain. I think Mike had one year with that gambling, gambling thing. thing. That was it. Other than that, who no doesn't matter. gamble? Who doesn't? If bro. if you if you if you have Rose. thousands, of, <laughs> <laughs> right? If you I have millions of dollars, more, right? Like you gonna gamble too? Yeah. Uh-huh. I mean, yeah. he just I, took I his say, to the extreme. Yeah, that's that's all. It we wasn't the I'm just saying the gambling story. I didn't have a problem. As long as you're not betting the game, do what you want. Your I mean, that, I agree. That, that guy could could go to the casino, gamble, 
play golf <laughs> all the all night right. before the game. And still go out. Get the, like, get the like, flu, quote unquote. Yeah, the flu. You know. Hung he's over. like Bruce Hang Wayne. Hang Bruce Wayne would be they Batman. Bo- they all boosted night. that narrative for your man's too, because he was hungover and they called the flu game. Yep. So we could you know come up. Because Mike game, had yeah. the best support in the thing. And just Here's like the thing. you came about flopping. <laughs> Michael Jordan. <laughs> Michael Jordan was like Bruce Wayne. Like I swear he'd be like Batman all night and then, you know, still be running Wayne Enterprises during the day. I mean, he'll fly in, and, you know, the one Gatorade. thing you can do is fly a few hours before a game. He'll fly in oh, from his little God. gambling episode. You putting hands still put up for it. <clears throat> yeah. That's what I'm right? I just smelled like this heavy smell of alcohol. Man, you a dad. Uh, life changed. You carry wet wipes with you, hand sanitizer. See, your, no, see, your kid's still small, though. Like, my daughter, she like, whatever. What's uh, wrong with you? All right, get back to uh, this week of stupid. Uh, Nana Woods, Napoleon, allegedly used fake credit cards to spend fifteen thousand dollars at Jimmy Jazz. I wasn't sure Jimmy Jazz had that much stock or uh, material to buy. Jimmy spend Jazz 50, has a lot of this stuff going so fast. You I was gonna get, say. I saw I ninety seven ninety. You could have probably just bought Jersey. Jimmy Jazz with fifty. <laughs> An article written by uh, us, Mario. Shout out to Mario at Sneaker Party Detroit. Twenty uh, seven year old Nana Woods, Napoleon, the star of the Lionsgate series Money and Violence was recently arrested in Brooklyn for using fake credit cards at Jimmy Jazz and spending $15,000 on a shopping spree of shoes and clothing. According to the New York Daily News, the cops found him with more than two dozen fake credit cards belonging to 29 different names. Oh. Telling you, baby, that's no fun. Let me stop. Yes, it is. Hold on. 12 credit cards with No, two dozen. Oh, two dozen. Okay, Over two, more that. than two dozen. But still, that still had, I mean, you had three credit cards with two names on it. More than two dozen. So anything more than 24. Oh, I said, well, oh it's like 20. prison food <laughs> and penis. Uh, Napoleon is accused of using the cards on 43 different occasions in May and June at Jimmy Jazz. Uh, workers at the store said he racked up about $15,000 in purchases before his scam was discovered. Way to be on top of it. He just stole $15,000 and somebody finally decided to... Uh, <clears throat> Catch them because they don't really. If it goes, if it goes through, they feel like if they, if it, however he was doing it, it was going by his name ID and all that. The numbers coming out the same when I was on his card. You can't really do nothing about it, even though you can suspect it. Oh, no. And then probably looking at it, it's like, we made our sales week. We made our sales week. And then it's like, hold on now, unless they start getting chargebacks, that's when they be like, okay, we need to look into this. I want to go back and listen to the show. Like, I don't think there's ever been any single drop played more on one episode. <laughs> uh, a man mm-hmm. tried. <laughs> A man tried to smuggle twenty thousand dollars, seven hundred dollars, or twenty thousand seven hundred dollars worth of drugs in a pair of Kobe's. Uh, an article written by Riley Jones for Soul Collector. Some guy tried to stash over twenty grand worth of drugs in his was his carp deal, Kobe Elevens, uh, while crossing the border into Arizona. U.S. Customs and Border Protection reports that an eighteen-year-old male from Nogales, Arizona, was uh, stopped at a pedestrian crossing for inspection when agents discovered over a pound of heroin. Tucked inside his shoes. Now, how the hell do you get a pound of heroin inside your shoes? What, what happened in the good old days? You just swallowed it in a balloon. <laughs> I'll tell you, we, we've gotten real lazy in the last 30 years. Uh, Somebody's make this country great. I know, <laughs> right. Trump. They're not going to check my Kobe's. Uh, according to the, the first place they would check I know. a shoe. I hide things in shoes, like at a hotel or whatever. Right. Oh, check shoe. this out. According to the report, the drugs were valued over twenty thousand seven hundred dollars and had been molded into the shape of an insole. So oh, cool! I know that actually sounds pretty smart. Like how they still found it, I don't know. It's kind of like Breaking Bad. Remember they made the little? Uh, didn't they make something out of it and they shipped it over? I think of another drug show I would watch. It might be another drug. Show. I know they they put it in a chicken they, batter. Yeah, or something. You know. Yeah, they had the dogs at the. Maybe floor. you should have had a bucket of chicken batter sniffing on that shoe. That's it's, probably yeah. That's probably what it was. Illegal activity guarantee. really creates some ingenuity. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm saying. I this. I mean, it's funny because this like has to be like the fifth story this year we've read about somebody trying to smuggle drugs in their shoes. And next couple months, you're gonna have a copycat. Yep. Somebody mm, yep. gonna try. I want to try. I want to be on I the bet show. I can get away. With I want to be on this weekend, stupid. Everybody uh, knows you never go full retard. <laughs> uh, an art- Oh, a teenager was slashed in the face while uh, trying to buy sneakers. This is fucked up. In an article written by Riley Jones for Soul Collector, according to the Daily News, an 18-year-old man was slashed in the face and robbed at a Harlem Park uh, during a sneaker deal gone wrong. It took place at Central Park North on a Sunday evening, where the teen had agreed to meet a man to buy sneakers. However, the situation took a violent turn after the two men disagreed over the price. That's when the police say the suspect slashed the 18-year-old across his cheek and forehead. 
Uh, it's a buck fifty in it. Uh, absconding with the victim's Ferragamo belt and fifty dollars in cash. So, so okay, I'm confused. So he slashes him and then proceeds to make him take his belt off and pull off fifty dollars in cash. Did he get the like shoes? He took his belt. Yeah. How though? I mean, was it wasn't it on him? Yeah, yeah, he took right. it off of him. I guess. Okay. And fifty dollars. I guess. While he's rolling around holding, holding his, his face, face. Uh, yeah, and kept the shoes he was gonna sell. Uh, exactly. <laughs> Damn. This is messed up. Uh, the victim was treated for serious injuries while the police are still on the hunt for the suspect. You'll Naturally. never find him. Then I know. It's a wrap on that. But uh, did he have his hat on? Did the officers have their hat I on? I know. Right? Yeah, did he have? He kept his hat on. <laughs> That's the only reason why they we talking about this story. Yeah. That's why a suspect's yeah. on the loose. He had to go yeah, get his hat, right? His hat. It's like, uh, what's the thing they got to tell you? Your Miranda rights? Yeah. Uh-huh. Like, even if they arrest Named after you. Carmen Miranda? Yeah. So, they, so your hat <laughs> has to be on and joke. you have to get Miranda rights. Otherwise, it doesn't. Qualifies a proper can, arrest. And you can't ask them any questions. So if your hat wasn't on when you arrested me, even though you caught me doing something illegal, it doesn't count, right? <laughs> oh, that counts. <laughs> no. It Lawyer counts. Like, you just going to be like, like, he didn't have his hat on. He's going to get yelled not at guilty. by his supervisor. Your supervisor is going to write <laughs> not you guilty. as soon as you get to the precinct. You turn in your report, you're going to get one to sign yourself. <laughs> like, he didn't have his hat on. I, I can just think of like a Law & Order episode. Well, like the uh, lawyer. Tintin. Yeah, he wants to petition. He was like, I'm fighting the case. Uh, he didn't have his hat on when he arrested him, so. I want to go free. Uh, teen arrested for stealing youth sneakers and iPhone at gunpoint. Man, he was getting violent out here. In an article written by Mark Belcher for WIB, WIVB.com, a Buffalo 16-year-old Buffalo, is facing. New York. <laughs> New York is out of control. Uh, is facing felony charges following an invest- investigation into an armed robbery. Officers say the 16-year-old held up a juvenile just before 9 p.m. on a Wednesday night. Working from an anonymous tip, police say they were able to track down the teen. When police accounted the teen later that night, they say he had the victim's Air Jordans in his possession. <laughs> got some idiots out here, man. Telling you, baby, me. that's not mine. <laughs> yes, it is. The teen faces felony charges of robbery, forcible theft with a deadly weapon, grand larceny, and criminal possession of a loaded firearm. Uh, the teen's name, I know. The teen's name is not being released due to the potential for him to be charged as a youthful offender. Uh, at that point, are you really a youthful no. offender? You he kinda charge you, him as an adult. I know you are what you are. Like I mean, you are sixteen. You know better. You know not to commit grand larceny and criminal possession of a loaded firearm. Like you need a. I think to... nowadays these stories are even worse because there's so much money to be made out here, especially at these kids at a younger age. Now you can make so much money at a younger age. Why are you doing this? Right. I honestly thought it was just people like love the show and the show was getting a bigger profile and they wanted to be a minimum wage and they is way to be higher than it was when I was coming up. You can get you can get to a I don't understand some of this right now. I mean, Mark, I'm gonna need your help for this next segment. At so, 16 years old, where do you get the idea to even do that? I guess I don't know. Uh, Fast money. The, I would say yeah, these high school schools man. now. People don't want to work for MTV. Yeah, I, the high school students now that they're on a whole different level. Some of these kids I be seeing how they talking, what they get into is like. I wouldn't even even cross my mind till I was 22, 23. That's kind of And it's like 17, 18 years old. These girls, these ladies, these, these, because I come in, you know, I work at a shoe store, manager there, and I, you know, I help people, and I just hear their side conversations and the way they be talking and just what they're into is just, it's like, wow. When, when we were younger, I know when I was younger, one, I couldn't wait to have a summer drive so I could have my own money. Mm-hmm. I couldn't wait to get my own car so I had to ride with nobody, and I couldn't wait to have my own place. I wanted my independence. These people nowadays, like, I'm going to live at home for as long as I can. Yep. I'm going to, you know, get allowance as long as I can. And if I don't have to have a job, God bless them. Don't you, feel, don't you feel stupid? <laughs> yeah, I, I know, right? <laughs> I mean, Let me tell you how, you how it went in the 70s. Oh, I can only imagine. <laughs> you were now, forced I'm 15, out. 16 <laughs> years old. I have a summer job. Uh-huh. I get paid every what, two weeks. At what soda shop? I worked at, at a... At a place where they Kreskis. made <laughs> Kreskis. I, I'm trying to think of this. What you say Kreskis? It's a, it was a weird summer job where it was beans for coffee making machines mm-hmm. that you just bagged up and they sent them to various stores. But when right. I got paid, I had to get my check to my parents. Oh, damn. Whoa. And they gave me an allowance off the money I made. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's how it was in the 70s. Hey, That's how parenting Whew. was Whew. back then. Now, people, you know, you 
you know, I got my money. You ain't getting it, mom and dad. But you living in mom and dad's house. And like you say, you, you they ain't even doing people's that. I know somebody, conversations. You, they just talk to their parents, parents reckless. My parents, my mom used to do that. When I, work, I started working at my mom, I came out of eighth grade. The summer I came out of eighth grade, my mom made me get a job. So I've been working ever since about 14 years I was in a, I think I was a sophomore in my first job. When I had my first job. Eighth grade. And it's like, my mom, that's your money. Cool. But when you run out. Anything if it's not a necessity, I, got a nephew, I can't give it to you. I got a nephew mm-hmm. who got a job like a year or two out of high school at Chrysler. It was like, man, I'm good. I want to rap. <laughs> like, the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a like, bunch Duh. of my buddies did that. They didn't go to college. They still with, with Ford or one of the one of the big four now. And they, they came right out of high school and into a I'm nice sorry. job, yeah, was, which is good. Really, that, yeah, yeah. Real, so, it used to be a career. Yeah. Right Initiative yeah. is like. A dinosaur at this point. Now they man. running the old timers out, offering the new people twelve, fourteen dollars mm-hmm. an hour, and they thinking that's a lot of money, but they ain't making thirty four dollars out. an hour. They'll yeah. find out real quick. Buy a house with that money. Yeah. Uh all right, so um I had a new segment I've been wanting to do for a while. Um and I actually kinda got the idea from my friend Mark here. Yeah. Uh, oh, no. on, on his show. <laughs> <laughs> that's the music for this. So um Periodically, we even me and him kind of both do this. Like Yelp is like the shit because whenever you want to go anywhere, like a nice restaurant or you're going out of town for a hotel, you always look up the reviews because you you are guaranteed to find the best things there. And so uh, I wanted to create this new segment called uh, Yelp One Star Sneaker Store Reviews because the one star reviews and hearing people bitch about their problems for whatever business is the funniest thing to read sometimes. Um, so there are a number of stores. Um, I just, they're just random. Um, I think I started with Chicago. Um, let me see. <laughs> there was, okay, so I'll start with this one. You read the next one for me. Um, so it's this Full Locker North Ave in Melrose Park, Illinois. <clears throat> All right. I stopped by here after being by, told by an employee that the store is open until 8 p.m. when I phoned in earlier in the day. Get your hours straight! <laughs> All caps. Yeah. <laughs> you were open until 7 p.m. on Saturday. Waste of a trip. David how, L. How far were you traveling, traveling David I know. L. He's so pissed. He's so mad that they don't know their hours. Well, why didn't you get there earlier anyway? I know. I mean, exactly. But you're getting there an hour in his mind, an hour before they close. It's still, that's still cutting it close, isn't it? Uh, Nobody yeah, wants someone showing up an hour before it closes. <laughs> I know. It's always that one person out of the, out of the, the store Shows anyway. up five minutes before they close. Want to wander around the store and window shop. It's always that one person. Though. Um. You want to do it? Are you going to do that? Oh, one? boy. Let's see. Oh, it's a, it's a woman? Yes. Oh, boy. Why do I have a feeling it's going to be really bitchy? You want me to do it? You want me to do it? You do it. It's your okay. show. Okay. You do it. All right. This one is at the <laughs> Foot Locker. Like, I just want to hear you do like, a bitchy woman's I, voice. I'm going to try. Uh, <laughs> Foot Locker, South State Street in Chicago, Illinois. Okay. It's got to be a big ass store, too. There are employees engaging in fraud here. My boyfriend and I came here to get a pair of shoes. Javier helped us out, and he provided us a great service. We ran into the problem when we were waiting in line. We were the next customers from the time we stood in line, but somehow we were standing there for 10 minutes. 10 minutes? Is that? I know. That, God forbid, right? Is it that long? I didn't think 10 so. minutes? Uh, nobody has a cell phone, no games to play on a cell phone? Yeah. Uh, we witnessed the women in front of us giving the cashier about eight cards. <laughs> cashier did not ask for ID and was letting this happen for a pair of children's shoes and adult shoes. Mind you, this woman's friends were at another register with more cards. This is fraud! <laughs> oh, it's like that actor that had uh, more than two dozen cards. <laughs> two dozen credit right. cards. Yeah, I know. It's Nana Woods out there. Why is she giving the store one star? She should be giving know, the customer this, one uh, star. <laughs> why wouldn't someone call false prevention? You have a phone too, bitch. All right. Instead, my boyfriend and I left and didn't buy the shoes. Well, why, why do you care? I know. <laughs> Sorry, I'm yelling at her. I know, I'm upset with her paper. too now. She's listening. Why, uh, yeah, she's a listener. <laughs> Hopefully Paloma is Hopefully listening. Hopefully this brings her down or not. She's humbled by this story. Uh, while the employees were engaging in their sketchy bullshit, they lost a the sale <laughs> from people who have actually earned their money to pay for the product. My trust in Foot Locker is officially gone. Oh, get, oh. Way to be <laughs> overdramatic. Trust, I know. Because her of trust one, in one Foot incident. Like Foot Locker's running for office. Uh, my boyfriend's credit card coincidentally got swiped after our last oh. visit, and the people who swiped it went to Nike. Oh. Because of what we witnessed, we now know where it was swiped. Stay far away from this location. <laughs> Yikes. Paloma H. 
Uh, she should Calm be down, off. Paloma. She should become a detective. I mean, I she. My thing is, if you really want to make a difference, why ain't you report it to the police instead of yelling? Right. I she know. had a phone. <laughs> she just. Did she <laughs> have a hat on. She might. have You know what? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> she never had on. That's why. That's why she didn't make a citizen's arrest. She didn't want to get in trouble with her supervisor. <laughs> 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 her boyfriend. <laughs> she could have made a citizen's arrest, but she didn't oh, have she her She could have worn that other cap called a thinking cap. <laughs> yes, <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, why, am I the only one that thinks it's very dubious that it was really fraud in front of her? Not somebody I know. that has multiple credit cards that might not. Uh, yeah. Because God forbid somebody has accepted. more than one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, this one is funny. Very bad customer service. <laughs> I asked for a specific color of her shoe, and she said said she couldn't hear me and was laughing with the coworkers that she couldn't understand my English. I waited on the phone for 15 minutes, and she didn't tell me to hold on the line or that she got someone to look for my shoe, uh, Crystal Z. Why'd you wait for 15 minutes? I don't know. Oh, God. I got put on hold once. Uh, I called the store. Uh, I think it was Circuit City. Remember those uh, fine establishments, Circuit City? Oh, yeah. yeah. That's why they're still in business, right? Before, no, before. That's because Best Buy. They, <laughs> the reason why they went out of business is because Best Buy had price matching. So Best Buy would raise their prices and then price match. So everybody would come to my store, <laughs> come to my store, and they would, I would price match so it, that would decrease your traffic. You close, and everybody comes to me for high price. I called them to see if they I'm had serious. something. And like, you felt the need to defend the good honor. <laughs> what? Cir- uh, Circuit City? Ah, uh, they're fine. That had no problem with Circuit City. But I, this guy went to go look for it and set the phone down. Uh-huh. And so after about 10 minutes, I was like, uh... Where'd this guy go? What's right. what's gonna happen? So now I'm just now I'm totally invested. Like I really wanted to know how long this was, was gonna take. So I drove to the store while on hold, <laughs> walked into the fucking store, and saw the actual phone that put me on hold just sitting there. Just sitting there. No one within twenty feet of it. Are you wow. serious? Yeah, I was you so was gonna hang up. I was so pissed. I'm, I was so pissed. I was uh, on hold. This is why I technically hate for about twenty five minutes. Wow. With. I, I hate, hate calling anybody. We do that like at my store depends on how busy we are. We never put nobody on hold. As long as someone been on hold at my store is like three four minutes, right? So we'll we'll help. Let's see what we're doing unless we're busy. Of course, the customers in front of us have priority over mm-hmm. people on the phone. But my pro, my because they're gonna buy problem. something. What kind of Peter Griffin voice will grind my gears <laughs> is when people try to shop over the phone. Yeah, so uh, how many oh, pairs God. of how many pairs of blue shoes you got in a size twelve? <laughs> like, like, or how many white and black Nike shirts you got with the Nike swoosh on the sleeve? Like, I don't, I can't answer that. Right, you could come in and shop. Oh, if you come in, whatever. I get but I will discount. say though, if I'm but, living, I mean, here's the thing. Like, because in my case, right, I wear a size fifteen, so it's hard. Right. So, like, your store oh, is like an hour yeah. away. I'm not gonna drive. Yeah, yeah, out that's there. about five a size fifteen. Yeah, we understand that because that's what those are rare sizes. But right. like, when you ask him how many blue and yellow shirts you got in the small and <laughs> okay. what brands, that's it's like, yeah. like, come on now. You've got a website that or you can look on Instagram. Generic. How much come in? How much of the answers you just make up? Oh no, <laughs> no, no. We, we it's like oh, we we'll answer, we'll answer, answer like two here. or three. Like, yo, if you got any more further questions, we encourage you to come to the store. We'll take care. Just go. Yeah, no, they're here. Come on down. Yeah, come on down. This yeah, one. Right. <laughs> Try this, and then just, give him, give him your coworker's name. <laughs> I can't. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> you can't when you're the manager. Uh, like <laughs> this isn't the manager. This is. Uh, Ask for this person when you get here. This is the cashier. I'll be <laughs> the one with the hat on. <laughs> right. <laughs> Like, I know your least favorite imp- uh, co-worker. Yeah. Um, and then fire him for it's, lying. It's funny because this Foot Locker on South State Street in Chicago has like a lot of negative reviews. Here's another one. Worst service ever. I couldn't even get help to buy a pair. The girl working ran right past me to ask someone who barely set foot into the store as if they needed help. I did. I did. I wanted to buy shoes, and I was ignored. I won't be back. No, oh, Brandy God. T. They're not going to miss you. It's two you of them. You like that? You like that? Oh, here's my two favorite. Okay. Here's that, another. Doesn't that sound like a needy millennial? It did. <laughs> uh, why is zero stars a negative star is not possible? <laughs> Those are the best. I know. I purchased a pair of high-performance basketball shoes at another Foot Locker for $175. They're ripped in a month under moderate use and indoors only. I talked to Foot Locker Corporate. And they said I should be able to take it to any Foot Locker location to get an exchange. Hmm. As the shoe seems defective. I was downtown, and it was much more convenient for me to return it here than where I originally purchased it. The friendly girl at the cash register was about to give me my exchange, as she understood that this was not something you expect out of a $175 basketball shoe. Just as they were about to give me my exchange, another sales associate by the name of Satan... Came over here and told me that they could not change it because it had been worn. 
Well, no shit. <laughs> it's not going to rip if I don't wear it. <laughs> he first lifted the shoe and saw what the defect was. <laughs> That's I would have argued with him. Uh, no, uh, no, I didn't uh, wear it. Uh, I, I never wore it. No, I uh, came this, in a box this, like this, that. What are you talking not, about? This is where we're gonna, I'm going to come in on this because Uh-oh. I have this, um, this. I had this at my store. Uh oh. <laughs> I hope no one left a review. I, 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 I looked let up people his know. store reviews. There's none. Nike one. has a two to three year warranty on shoes, right? So uh-huh. if you buy a shoe and you wear it and it rips or the air bubble busts or whatever, go on Nike.com, file your claim, they'll send you a box. They'll examine the shoe. They'll either give you a gift card for the full price of the shoe. You could buy the shoe and sell. They're going to get the full retail price. Or they're going to replace the shoe. Right. So if I sell you a shoe, I'm just the middleman. If it tears, it wasn't because when it got here, right. we hooped it in the bag and then threw it back in the box. <laughs> and then when you got it, it ripped. Like, that's what I'm trying to explain to people. Like, no, here's the thing, though. I we don't have a damage program yet. Like, Full Locker and somebody else is that kind of. I feel where you're coming from. But he did call corporate, and they did tell him that he could take it to the so, store. So, so, so my so that thing is, that's, I'm just like, with this instance, yeah, they didn't probably handle it right. Did he have a, but just, just like, come on. Just oh, his, let's, well, let's 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 remember, too, this is just. His side of the story. Oh, <laughs> he could have warned them for three here's years. Where gets, I mean, who knows? Here's yeah. where it gets funnier, though. He first looked at the shoe and saw what the defect was. He looked at me and blatantly accused me of ripping it to do an exchange on purpose. Wait, that makes no I sense. <laughs> Why would you want to take time out of your day to exactly. go replace something for the same thing? He said that there's no way this could have happened. Just playing ball. He said he wore the same shoes every day and played <laughs> ball in them, too. And they have not ripped. What the fuck? <laughs> Right. I was insulted at the mere fact that he implied that I would go out of my way to exchange a shoe. I go through a lot of shoes. As oh. I am a sneaker enthusiast. <laughs> Ooh. I can like <laughs> it's cracking up. I was like I'm I'm there. <laughs> 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 y'all laughing too. Y'all, that's why I'm funny to y'all until y'all have to deal with your students. That's what makes it funny. Until you're, until, you're, until you're standing in front of the person who's like this. Because I did. Letty told me she returned two shoes, right? I don't have to deal with it. One that. shoe said was just worn. Said, <laughs> See, that's said what she I mean. Said she walked around her house. I said, you must be walking. You must be living in the palace. Inside of, you, must, you must be living you in a cabin. Because there's no way that you walk <laughs> in your house with these shoes. I mean, like laces torn. Like, like You had to run at least five or six suicides. Like, <laughs> just be real with me. Say, hey, I warm them. Oh, they were comfortable. Can you work with me? And just be up front and be real about it. Don't lie Man. and say, oh, yeah, I just tried these on. No, you how, didn't. How you got f- grass in your house? How frustrating. <laughs> I, <laughs> I, I can just picture the whole thing just, just going down. Like I know. That. It's a hilarious to think about. That's what makes it funny. Cause so how, people, how frustrating is it for you, though? Because you know you want to sometimes argue with the customer. You I know, know they're full of shit, thing, but you it's can't. Just like, I say, okay, man, you didn't wear these outside, right? So... <laughs> We were taught to take care of the customers because here's the problem, right? With damaged shoes, we have to take a hit for it on our inventory, right? Yeah. So, you know, they tell us that we don't really not unworn shoes, not supposed to take back because if you just do it, then people will just do it regardless. Because my friends that work at Nordstrom's, Nordstrom has, you can buy a pair of Ferragamos for world five years, take them back, and Nordstrom's can't say nothing. That's how the return wow. policy works, right? <laughs> so I have friends that work the next day. I talk to you. You got right. friends in retail. You exchange stores. So it's just like, just say, hey, I wore these. They were uncomfortable. And let me try to help gauge you. So, okay, I'll do this for you this one time and take them back. I'll take a hit in exchange for your loyalty as a customer for you to come back. Or just say, hey, we can't do nothing here, but I got an alternative route for you to go. Don't just come and lie and say, like, yeah, oh, yeah, geez, you know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah, I just wore these, uh, like tried I'm them on. Warm in the living room, and like, it's like no, the, the bottoms are all yellow. Customers can be dirty. such jerks. <laughs> it's like the customers are always right. That rule has turned people into monsters. Yeah. It's always right as far as receiving fair and good customer right. service. Nah, you can't come in and say, yeah, two plus two is six. <laughs> let me uh, <laughs> honor that. Like, no, it's not. Give me some free but, shoes. <laughs> let, me, let me get through these last two. Uh, this one's from Champ Sports on Michigan Ave in Dearborn, Michigan. Ooh, Uh-oh. Uh, one star. That's generous. <laughs> Couldn't get weighted on. And Nep sales associate measured my son's feet. His current shoes are a size two, and she measured him at a one. What, what the, the fuck? fuck? <laughs> feet, uh, feet grow. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> some, of, some of the customers reeked of dope. dope. And it was... <laughs> And it was, <laughs> <laughs> and it was joked about loudly by staff and customers. Cause this is my favorite part. Cause since this was everyone wanted some. Oh, <laughs> Who still says dope? I know. Rick the dope. Oh, uh, red case, you are, aren't you? <laughs> uh, really messed up. The staff oh. should be more professional. 
The sales girl ignored us to start. We had to interrupt her by standing by a display. She was slow. She dumped us off in another cell. I can tell this is Jumpman's favorite segment so far. No one, no one helped the child into the shoe or anything. We left. <laughs> what did he mean by slow? <laughs> was she slow moving? Or was she retarded? Like, right. the, the sales girl was slow. Uh, we were blatantly ignored and unserviced. They'll never get my business again, as we have had two similar experiences. Wait, he said two similar experiences in the same story. At the same <laughs> nice at learning the same curve. Day, so you keep going oh, back. Joe Man is crying right now. <laughs> nice he nice is learning curve. I know. Like three times. Uh, Once again, why are you giving them one star? Because a customer smelled of, quote, <laughs> dope. And the, the, my favorite part, though, is the consensus <laughs> out of everyone was okay, that let, they wanted let, let me break down this review. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. Play, God. play the music. I love that we see the two sides. Let me break down this review, okay? the one, if someone's smelling like dope, they're probably cooking it. If you're cooking it, you're not working at Chimps because your profit gain is way larger where you're cooking it than coming to Chimps. <laughs> well, two, not two, I have parents do this. They buy their kids' shoes way too big, so they come in there looking like Aladdin. They curled at the toe, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, oh, like, like your son, like they're trying to be cheap and be having two big shoes on. Like, yeah, them need no, they, they're not, they're good. It's just that they look like that because they're too big. They're curled up at the toe. Your son, you bought him a size two last time, but he's wearing a one. You're trying to be stri- cheap and strapped. He's going to grow into Yeah, like, dog, he ain't growing fast enough. Because you know, right. <laughs> the mag- in the minute, you're going to need the magic carpet once the middle of the mid for the mid so the shoes going so it's just wow. like that's how it is and my thing is displays are usually out of the way so the customers can move through so if you had to stand by a display then then you're actually getting out of the way yeah. so if you're getting her attention you usually would stand in a walkway or at the register right. so for you in order to get this salesperson attention you stood by a display then you really probably didn't uh, get their attention um, that was contrary to what let me get through uh I'm, I love you all. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. But let me get to these last two real quick. And uh, this one is from the World Foot Locker on uh, Cermak Road, Riverside, Illinois. Riverside? All right. <clears throat> Stopped in here this afternoon just to pick up a few pairs of socks. Didn't want to get any shoes or any T-shirts. Just two simple pairs of Jordan basketball socks. I will say this about this particular location. The stock is organized, even <laughs> if the people are not. The staff was running all over the place in typical Foot Locker fashion, shouting out the code, word, code words of back and roll out. <laughs> what, what, this what, person knows a lot about I know. that. He, he said work there. I know. <laughs> yeah, stop he bitching know and get an application. <laughs> but what really ticked me off about this location is when I finally found the socks, they had pretty much all of the colors. I had a hard time picking out which ones I wanted, so naturally I was checking them all out. A sales associate came over and asked if I needed help. I asked him that I, I told him that I was good and that I was just finger, figuring out which ones I was going to get, which was code for, I'm good, now go away. How's he supposed to know what your code, just because you know their code? How I know, do you, how do you, know your code. Why are they supposed to know your code? Your code. Uh, not only did he insist on letting himself help me, <laughs> but he stood over me. While I was trying to make my decision, <laughs> hovering. Put the sacks on him. Put the sacks on Right. <laughs> He's like, hovering. Wow. Way to be, way to intimidate the customer, man. You were, oh my God. I know. I understand that they work for commissions, but you don't wow. hover over a customer while they're trying to make a decision. Never. Never. Won't be back at this location again. Besides, at this particular mall, there are three other full lockers to choose Ooh. from. Ooh, go there then. It, Send me the H. It, it's almost like you can't win. You either no. don't get any service from the uh, rep. All right, or, you get or, too much. Or a guy's hovering as you're buying yeah. two fucking pairs. Just pick out what right. socks you want. They're socks. I love how Damian all he P. gets his commission. That's <laughs> right. yeah, on two pairs of socks. <laughs> yeah, I'm hovering for two pairs. <laughs> commission on two What's pairs of socks. Killing it. <laughs> Bullshit. Uh, Damian P. At for the for the same story. He's. Very eloquent, detailed in his uh, review. <laughs> this place sucks. <laughs> Favoritism of retro Jordans. <laughs> Those are the no best kind of reviews. I know. <laughs> this place sucks. This place sucks. <laughs> One star. Hey, uh, Jordan sweet. I know. Like he's from Riverside, but he talks like he's from Jersey. Uh, uh, all right. Anyway, I'm about to skip a whole lot of stuff. Let's get to our release dates. <laughs> um, release dates brought to you by Sneaker Bar Detroit, the number one source of sneaker news and release dates. Uh, that's a lot of shoes coming up in the next couple of weeks. If you are the Adidas, Ultra Boost, or NMD fan, uh, Mark, W. Matter of fact, pull out some of the shoes while I'm going over this. I want to see what type of 
Oh, Prep boy. All right. Yeah, you guys uh, can rag on me. Oh, uh, yeah, I am. Uh, I will. I don't know about the other guys. Wednesday, <laughs> August 17th, you have the Ultra Adidas Ultra Boost Olympic Medals Pack. No, those are dope. I like those. Mm-hmm. Uh, Thursday, August 18th, you have a shitload of Adidas NMD, XR1s, and R1s, uh, such as the uh, the Clear Red, the Adidas NMD XR1 Black Blue, uh, the Adidas Women's NMD XR1 Triple White, the Adidas Women's NMD XR1 Glitch Pack, the and the Adidas NMD R1 Reflective Pack. Now those are hot. Uh, I'm gonna try to find those if I can. And then you also have the Nike. It's Guru. pronounced you know, Gordon. You, know, you Which might one? know, but Gayakusu. Uh, you got it better than I would. All right, free. <laughs> That's what we're going. We're rolling with that. <laughs> free RN Flynet. Uh, Friday, August 19th, you have the Nike Zoom KD9 Birds of Paradise. That's a dope color. And yeah, it is. And the Nike Flynet Racer Vote. Uh, Saturday, August 20th, you have the Nike Air Max 90 Ultra SC Cargo Khaki, the Air Jordan Retro 5 Olympic, the Air Jordan 5 GS Wolf Gray, the Deodora Intrepid from Seo to Rio collection. Each shoe is limited to 500 pairs each. I think it's like nine shoes in that entire collection. Uh, the Casino Special Edition Adidas Original Superstar 80s, and the Nike Happy Dunk 2016 Low Limited USA. Uh, Sunday, August 21st, you have the Nike Zoom Flight 96 Olympic. You have the Nike Air Force One 180 OG. Thursday, August twenty August twenty fifth, you have three Nike Flyknit Roshi twos. You have the black, dark gray, uh, the dark gray, black gamma vote, gamma blue vote, and the black, dark crimson jade. And then you also have the Nike Lunar Epic Low Flyknit Multicolor. Uh, Friday, August twenty sixth, you have the Nike Air Foam Posit Pro Hyper Cobalt, and the Adidas Women's NMD XR One Prime Knit Clearonix. That is a European release only. So. Uh, try to check out like uh, GD Sports. I crazy about this because it's Nike Air Force One Eighty, the Barkley one, right? Yes, the Olympic one, right? Yeah, we got that on sale at our store already. And this Flight Ninety Six Olympic is already on the shelves. I feel like already. Oh, what the hell, Sneaker Party Trade? <sighs> staff <laughs> meeting. Uh, <laughs> Saturday, August twenty seventh. You have the Air Jordan Retro Eleven Low Closing Ceremony, and you have the Air Jordan Retro One K L High OG uh, Obsidian. Uh, Wednesday, August thirty first. You have the Nike KD. Nike Zoom KD9 Multicolor <clears throat> and the Nike Kobe 11 Summer Pack. I have not been a fan of any of the Nike Kobe 11 so far, so whatever. They're comfortable. They're cool. I mean, they could be comfortable. They just don't look like shit. Uh, Saturday, September 3rd. <laughs> Buried in them ponies. <laughs> I got rid of them. Uh-huh. 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 ponies. Uh-huh. 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 They look like the state fair. You should go leave them down there with that Woodward and John are <laughs> <laughs> leaving Woodward. They're Woodward not even there no more. <laughs> I know. That's why you should the leave Nova them there. The Nova Center. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Saturday, September 3rd. We I guess you could just call this band day because you have the Air Jordan Retro 1 High OG band, the Air Jordan 31 band, and they are also trash. Uh, and Jordan Trainer One Low Band. JB, you like those thirty ones, don't you? Though I like thirty ones. I like. I the, think I'm about getting a pair of hoop and the try them out. And I that's like the only the, way. I, uh, somebody the gifted those. The trainers. Yeah. I like the trainers more than I like trainers, the thirty ones. The band. I'm gonna check them. I gotta get the best in the band. I, a lot of people slept on the yin yangs. The white black pair of yin yang virtual ones. I'm just tired of ones. Those were at the bottom. They were constructed terribly. Like it had a bubble and lump on the side on multiple pairs. The black and white <laughs> ones were cool. I'm just I tired of ones. To black and I'm just burnt out on ones so far. I'm just feeling the band on the That's sweet. So, yeah. Oh, that's you know, sweet. But it's really not the actual band shoe. Right. Like, people have just been. The airships. They need to bring those out. I swear those shoes will sell. What do you think about Which that? Which one? The airships? The Nike airship is the actual band shoe. Yeah. As, as, yeah, that's the one he wore in the, before he got the ritual. Yeah, so I, yeah, that would be dope if they actually did it. Um, Saturday, September 10th, you have the Air Jordan Retro 12 Black Nylon. Thursday, September 15th, you have the Nike Kobe 11 EM Mama Curio. Uh, Friday, September 16th, you have the Adidas D-Rose 7 Hydration. Saturday, September 17th, you have the Adidas Original. Oh, did I skip a lot of stuff? Nope. Uh, NMD Color Boost Pack, the Adidas NMD XR1 Core Black, and the much-anticipated Air Jordan Retro 4 Premium Obsidian. Uh, there's a lot of shoes coming. Well, not a lot. Still no word on official release dates for the Vans Bandana Pack, the upcoming Adidas Original Jeans Colorway, the Adidas Ultra Boost Clear Onyx, the Adidas NMD City Sock Black White, the Adidas KB83 Retro, uh, the Adidas Yeezy 350 Boost V2, the Nike SB Zoom Dunk Low Pro Camo, the upcoming Nike SB Stefan Janowski Elite Damn Colorways, man. yeah, the Nike Lunar Flow Black, the Nike Air Hirachi Metallic Blue, and the Nike KD9 Red October. There are also a number of shoes releasing overseas with no set release date for here in the States, such as the Asics Gel Veg Tan Pack, 
the Billy Special Edition Reebok Club C85 Tricolor, and the Nike Air Presto SE Neutral Olive. Stay tuned to SneakerBarDetroit.com for more sneaker news and release dates. And one of my favorite segments of the show is... I can play the piano with my dick. I've been practicing, guys. Uh, (laughs) It is a talent. (laughs) And I know you're all envious. It's been a lot of practice. (laughs) Yes, yes, indeed, a lot of practice. And before I go on, I have to ask Guru a question here. The uh, yin-yangs that you were talking about, that's when you steal a left shoe from one store and a right shoe from another, correct? (laughs) (laughs) No, when Jordan decides to drop retro ones that no one cares about. Oh, yeah, well, then i got to return mine because I got mine a different way. This is the Sneaker Box Podcast, Lady Sneakerheads of the Week, brought to you by Didi Negron and her Kick It With Didi 365 project. Where is that? On Instagram. So I gotta give some shouts. I gotta give a shout to uh, Lulu Shug. I can't forget Tandre. Don't forget Sneaker Girl. There's Girl in the Hood, or as I like to call her, Girl on the Hood. <laughs> two Fly Souls. Oh, and our two souls are together. Let me tell you, one, actually not one, the one you love to hate, and I'd love to love her. <laughs> Cannot forget, are you talking about me? No, I, I, wow. I'm sorry, uh, Mark is pulling out his... Uh, whoa, 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 I don't want to hear what he's pulling out. I really, really don't want to hear what he's pulling out. I know, that's all right. <laughs> Thank you for the approval. <laughs> Quite Rangers feeling. Feeling a little left out. Oh, I'm sorry. Can't forget uh, the First Lady 209, or as I like to call her, Michelle. Hey. Stacy X three times. Or Stacy Triple X. That's what we called her last night. Hey. Sweetie R with two Y's and of course Julie 38 with two E's what's with the doubles I think that, uh, a double E that's alright by me Mark's wife named Julie maybe that's her that, it could be Whoa. I doubt it is she writing to me <laughs> she could be I'll give you some advice later <laughs> of course I can't I forget give, my give Mark pointers about his life I, I, I could, need it I'm yeah, unemployed I'll, I will help of course there's uh, our girl down in Dallas Tanita Love you. Love you, Tanita. Hashtag Yolanda Adams, huh? And of course, uh, that is all of this week's Sneakerbox podcast. Lady Sneakerheads of the Week, if you want to be part of this. Brought to you by Didi Negron and the Kick It With Didi 365 project on Instagram. Of course, you can uh, find us there on Instagram. Look for uh, African Caesar. Or you can find me on Facebook under Barry White Ranger. Yes, sir. Until next week. No, That's all out, I got. Shout out to all the ladies, though, like for real, in the sneaker gang. Because I know... You thought my shout outs weren't for real? No, no. <laughs> no, that, no, I am not trying to undermine your shout out. Um, but, you know, on a serious note, like, you know, the ladies out there, you know, there's a lot of ladies, a lot of knowledgeable. Oh, yes, there, there are a lot of ladies. <laughs> And, you know, like, so, you know, it's people like Kiki with Didi, Jody Rockstar, uh, the Sneaker Mom, I know I forget, Sneaker Girl. Um, Wait a minute, why is not Jody Rockstar uh, friended me on Facebook? I don't know. I don't, you know, I'll call her and ask her. You do. Do that, I please. I do that. But there's a lot of them out there, and, you know, respectable, too. Like, you know, they're not out there just, you know, with a T-shirt on, bent over, doing something seductive. Even there, though White wait, Ranger would probably There are girls like that out there? There, there are. Oh, do send me pictures. Instagram is crazy. But, um, you know, shout out to the ladies, though. You know, Kick It With Dee Dee, she's um, putting this project together to try to find a female sneakerhead a day to shout out. So, and uh, Have her look at her souls underscore 23. Her souls underscore 23. So, out Dee Dee, if you're listening, 
If you are listening, look what's that, that up. One, what's that one young lady uh, you was with in Toronto? Oh, boy. Yeah, man. Woo! Hello Kitty. Yeah. Oh, wow. yeah. Just, wait, oh, just one? Yeah, yeah. You are just with one lady in Toronto? <laughs> 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 I got to take a trip to Toronto. I'm going to have to talk with you about that a little later, too. Oh, my God. I'm heading back there next week. Uh-oh. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like uh, White Ranger's going to make some uh, travel arrangements gotta, in the next Hang on, i got to call my travel agent right yeah. now. <laughs> oh, we driving, sir. Oh, Uh-oh. I'm flying. Yeah, I'm always flying. I mean, that's not that bad of a trip either. It's a either. nice little trip. It is a nice drive. little road trip. I don't care how you want a trip. I'm taking my trip by flight. <laughs> no, I, I said, hello, kitty. I don't know where I get that one from, but it's hello, cookie. Okay. You have her it's international over hello, in cookie. Toronto. Okay. It's hello underscore cookie. Wow. Okay, yes. I'm going to look her up, too. Um, shout Toronto's out to Hello, fine. hello yes. Cookie. Um, Mark just put out some of his uh, horrible Adidas in I his know. collection. I know. He has a collection of shitty Adidas shoes. and uh, <laughs> <They're>, <laughs> I actually wear them. That's what's uh, the most embarrassing part about them. Yeah. Them. Rock don't <laughs> stop. Probably, too. There you go. <laughs> now, I, I give you kudos for these because it looked like you went for a theme right here at the Michigan College. Big blue. You know, the the ones on the right, I think, were Michigan's, the like the team shoe that year. No one and it's off too, ones. by the way, because that's not really is that huh? That's not really Maze, is it? That was the Adidas version of Maze. Oh, no, that's same, why they same with the up. other one. That's yeah, it was two highlighters. Jeez, yeah, that's, that's why like a lot of lot of fans vote. didn't like them. That's voting blue. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's like I know. you had in there. Well, you don't like it. Well, I don't necessarily don't like. You Adidas, gonna come back to the show? You gotta come back. To I'm the show. allowed to. These are my favorite though. These are my winter boots. <laughs> What y'all think? Y'all think Marsha come back? They're ridiculous. Yes. Aren't they? Marsha come back. I'm allowed to? Yeah, yes, Mark. Because I don't know. Fellow I don't Isaiah know Basher. <laughs> well, I know. <laughs> and LeBron. Yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> yeah. He likes you of him. He, he has some sneakers and he's old like Jumpman. I try. So, I, mean, I try. Ain't nothing wrong with being old. We just <laughs> no, hope wise. we get the BIA. I'm wise. getting there. You see this? What is it? Right here? I got gray hair coming. See that? See that? That's stress gray. I, that's not <laughs> real gray. <laughs> <laughs> we, got, we got real gray. We don't qualify we, gray. We, we got ours. age gray. <laughs> we, don't have, we don't qualify the, the type not, of gray. You're not old enough to have gray. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Ooh. <laughs> we got the most gray in the room. Ooh. That's stress gray. <laughs> Uh, wow, that's, that's wisdom. but yeah, definitely. I, I got a, I, I got a good feeling the listeners are going to want you back. Um, so yeah, if you down, well, I don't have a job, so sure. <laughs> <laughs> Nike, Reebok, Adidas, get this man a job. Put him out there. I wonder when Jordan gonna send your care. Oh, back, oh when Jordan? I'm so sorry. Uh, I am so oh, sorry. No, I am so sorry. That stuff on Jumpman's foot. That's Sorry. The ultimate. No, no. And you got on a 14, a Jordan 14 size, 15 to stretch across the room. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm rocking the 13s. Imagine that. 13, How are you 14. fitting in those? Those are 11s. You're fucking nine feet tall. <laughs> <laughs> like a Nazi. It's not making sense. That's always a way to make See. things fit. Hey, but listen to what you think. Mark should definitely be here every show, man. He's hilarious. I love hanging out with him, man. You're um, too kind. Yeah, so yeah, if you want to come back, all three of you, yeah, be back. Too no kind, no be back definitely a, a Make dope it show. Nice, nice. I love today's to show. Back, I can't wait yes. to the people to the people hear it. Um, so um, shout outs real quick. You know we got shout out my main man Mike Rich, my brother from another mother. Get your son. Get your son. It's a gone. That's what I'm here for. That's what makes this Mike so Rich. I, you know what? It's funny. Remember when he first talked to him? He had like 200 subscribers yeah. on his YouTube. He's like at 120 something thousand. Yeah. Um, so I'm proud of bro. Um, follow my Instagram at rich underscore Mike 23. Also check out his YouTube channel at Rich's Kicks. And while you're on YouTube, check out two new channels for me. Um, check out G4 Vision. That's G hyphen 4 Vision. It's like one word. And uh, Skip Goes Hard. Skip Goes Hard is hilarious. Honestly, it's the most incoherent babbling I've ever heard in my life. It is hilarious. And he's like, it's his, you can tell it's his personality. It's, it's similar to Mike Rich, in which he's just doing his own thing. You can tell it's him. So, uh,. Check out Skip Goes Hard and G4 Vision. Subscribe. You're shitting me. I can, you can't keep me cooped up in yes, here, I okay? Can. I am a peacock. You gotta let me fly. I think my White Ranger wants to get to leave now. Uh, subscribe to both channels and follow them on Instagram at the real G4 Vision. That's the D A. Uh, and at the, uh, oh my bad, not the, at Skip Goes Hard. Uh, also, shout out to Sean Paper Chaser Williams and D Wells from OSD Live. Check out the past and present episodes on iTunes and Android podcast apps. Um, they stopped doing new episodes, but 
they got like over 365 episodes and they still remain relevant. They're like the Tupac of uh, sneaker podcasts. Like many years down the line, you still be listening to it. Uh, Mo Sports Talk with Christopher Henderson, aka Hollywood Cole 85. Check out their website, mosportstalk.com, and check out Chris's YouTube channel by searching for Hollywood85 underscore. And if you live in the Metro Detroit area and you need your sneakers brought back to life, or you got a dope idea for a nice custom for your shoe, go to Michigan's number one shoe restoration store, Nara Detroit. Uh, they are located at 26925 Plymouth Road in Redford, Michigan. While you're there, check out the shoe wall of gently used to dead stock sneakers. And remember the motto, you might age, but your shoes don't have to. Yeah. Uh, and remember to use Crep Protect, the official partners of the Sneaker Boss Podcast. Um, we are officially um, in the Crep Protect family. So um, definitely shout out to them and all the support that they've given us thus far. Uh, so anyway, uh, get the most out of your sneakers. Practice stay safe stunting and go to CrepProtect.com to get your shoes some protection. You can also follow them on Instagram and Twitter at CrepProtect. All right, man. So I'm African Caesar. Got my people back. Jumpman Boss did Guru. The got Mark in, Marky Mark in the house. Oh, yes, yes, my yes. bad. Yes, thank you. The morning word. I haven't heard that in a while. Do it. Yes, the morning word. Good things come to those who believe. Better things come to those who are patient. And the best things. Come to those who don't give up. It's your main man, Jumpman Boston. I love it. Yes, sir. African Caesar. Guru. Uh, Just Mark. (laughs) (laughs) Way way to break momentum. (laughs) (laughs) That's what I'm the best at. (laughs) At killing a room. It's like a relay race. You got all this stride going. uh, He's like, "Ah, I guess I just jog this up. All right. All right. So we'll all be back. Hopefully Mark will be back with us next week. Yes, sir. All right. We out. Peace. Peace. Peace.